kind of thing, but without the Wi-Fi element to it. Um, gotcha. So it's, yeah, it's running micro. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's their new micro. Yeah, microprocessor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I just I just came across that. How handy. how long has that been around? Because I just now saw one and thought, oh, I didn't realize that they were coming out with a microcontroller under the Raspberry Pi name. Yeah, it was a couple of couple of months, I think. Okay, so I'm not that far behind the times. I, I thought, the, oh, how uh, long has this been out? <laughs> I thought maybe it was in the years or something, and I just missed it because... 40, I think, is... The, the, yeah, the Pico 2040, I think, is last year. But they, this is a product in its own, is is a few months. Um, okay. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a relatively new thing. Mm -hmm. um, sort of by comparison to some of the others, but... Yeah, lots of fun. It's it's actually got me kind of looking at coding properly. So I've been threatening to do it for years, but you know, it's kind of giving me that. Oh, you had, I, I thought you were like uh, coding all the time. No, I'm CAD all the time through work, but uh, yeah, okay. coding has been that. that I, I've done bits of it in the past, but it's it's been still a bit of an, an elusive right. dark art for me, I think many attempts at learning over the years and just never found the right project to actually get me going on it. Right. But that's that's oh, probably key, isn't it, as well, is finding a project. It's, it's probably the oh, most no, that, absolutely. Way. I've taught I've taught coding um, at the makerspace on Arduino and stuff. And that's what I always tell people. I was like, hmm. the best way to learn code is to find some project you really want to complete and let it yeah. pull you along because you want to complete it. Don't, you know, use some examples, contrived examples that you could care less about. Find, I'm going to get this where I'm not, where maybe I'm, it's like somewhere where you guys aren't on the other side of where it's at. I've got two <laughs> monitors and I'm trying to decide whether to put you guys on this monitor or, or this one, but I think I'm going to put you guys back over here because, oh, it's uh, a struggle. well, yeah, because if I look at you guys, um, then I'm turned away from the microphone. And then my audio is always fading out. Almost every one of your projects that ends up on Instagram, I, I sort of look at it and go, oh, I, I, mm, I could do that. Yeah, I mean, that would be a good I, one. And then I, I think, yeah, I, I haven't got the time to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I look at people's stuff all the time. And, uh, um, and I think, oh, I have the skill set. To, to do that or certainly the abilities to learn that I should do, I should do that. Why am I not doing that? I mean, they're, they look like they're really enjoying it and that's a really cool outcome. Yeah. And that, that's there's just, just that's not what enough you keep time subject. in the day to, <laughs> to, to yeah, take like on that many, that many projects. Your automation project, for instance, that um, when you were posting about all that, I, I was like, Oh yeah, that, that's, that's uh, perfect. It's, yeah. it's a great sort of jumping in point for me to do um you know to, to use that as the as the project for me to learn all this mm. stuff on and kind of you know follow follow you through your your journey with it and then, yeah my apologies oh, crap, for, i haven't uh, got enough <laughs> <laughs> i need more time i can yeah i can talk about what uh yeah kind of what happened there so um are we uh do we are we just in the pre-show now or are we no we are live uh, now we, we've yeah. got live oh okay yeah, okay. yeah <laughs> we, we we live hit live for three okay. three nearly four minutes ago yeah. okay yeah we uh, just, we dive straight in we don't we do we don't bother you don't you don't say okay now we're in. and we're starting and, <laughs> yeah, we, we're, our, yeah, like, our, our show is podcasting. our show is half half the show is pre-show um <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, and so and so we talk for an hour and then, and then we get into recording the recording the podcast. So, yeah, and Andy just yeah. hits record at, at some point mid conversation, and then confuse all the listeners. Makes it yeah, makes right. it more fun for the listeners, I think. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. it probably, it, it probably it puts just, off half of the. It feels like you just walked up on somebody having a yeah, conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, we 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 kind and of you have to listen in for a while to try to yeah. get the context of what's going on in the conversation. Yeah. Well, the whole basis of the of the podcast is, yeah, three or more friends sitting in a pub, coffee right. shop, having a nice chat over a, a, a beer or some coffee, and that, that's the kind of the vibe we're going for. So, right, yeah, if, yeah. If you were just wandering yeah. along, you sat next down to somebody, you kind of, yeah, you're part way through a conversation. So, yeah, no, no, it's perfect. I, I like the, I like that. 
Um, I just thought when I had listened and maybe you add this in after there was like some little, um, like segue to the, to the guest, but I, there never is. It's always starts. Nope. And then, and then at some point later, there's the, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, sometimes so, we wait three or four hours before doing the introduction. <laughs> That's probably best because maybe just don't even introduce me at all. And then I can remain somewhat anonymous. So what happened with the automation project is um, I was really gung ho on like connecting everything in my in my shop um, and and tying it all into a central automation system that was um you know, kind of, kind of the, the spaceship or the building control or whatever you want to call it, where, uh, you have automation and you have a command center and you have this ability to see everything that's going on and then script above that and say, okay, well, mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, if the sun's out and it's not raining, run the pond outside, but if the temperature's over this much, do this. And, you know, just kind of all of that mm -hmm. fun stuff with, uh, with home automation, but do it with more industrial control type automation. Yeah. And, uh, and then I went to work doing that for a company. And so that kind of satiated that, that need. <laughs> and so I do that all day long, every day. Um, in addition to building, you know, what I'm, what I'm working on as far as automation projects and tools and equipment and so forth. Um, then there's this whole underlying infrastructure um, to tie all of that together across two buildings with a lot of cool stuff and robots and, and things. And so it was like, okay, well that completely scratched that itch. Um, and I'll probably <laughs> still do it here, you know, at, at the shop. Um, I'm just not spending as much time at the at the shop as i was when i was just doing my own thing so i think it's, it's difficult isn't it and, and then but the the downside is i've just kind of dropped off of like a lot of my posting because a lot of the stuff i do at work even though it's fun and it's exactly what i like doing i can't just be posting it all over social media so i've got mm -hmm. to find it i've got to find an outlet again to kind of get back into the social media stuff yeah i i think that's that's the thing isn't it it's it's difficult to if you've got something that you, you know, a particular project that you're passionate about, and then someone pays you to do it, it kind of takes that, takes the wind out your sails for it. So then, you know, I do an IT things for work, and I come home, and then my own, my own network and my own projects, IT projects and things, I've got no no steam left to right. to run with them. Right. You Are know, you I'm, the de facto IT? I mean, you said your day job, you you do CAD. Yeah, so CAD and did, did someone at some point recognize that you had IT skills and then they just glommed onto your IT skills or was that it, part of the job day it one? Was a, um, it was an interesting one actually because it was a small, it's a small sort of family run engineering firm. Um, mm -hmm. And I basically turned up doing contract drawing work for them. And uh, the guy who was doing their IT at the time was set to retire and he was more he was an engineer who had some it skills and i my background had been in both cad and then it management um but for like smes so all these sort of small right. business it type stuff so i just sort of said look you, you've got a bit of an opening i do it stuff as well as cad stuff mm, okay yeah kind so of it was just part of it yeah oh, yes yeah, cool. so i sort of muscled in and, and yeah sometimes people get in and then you know the it department is is kind of an afterthought because it's a small company or um, mm. or IT during some transition, IT changes out and there's no one around for a while. And then they find some engineer that happens to know something about IT. And then the next thing you know, you know, 80% of your job is IT yeah. and, and you're, and, but yet you're still, you know, on the hook to get your engineering done. And so and I've, that, met, that I've was met a exactly few friends what... who fell into that situation and then they're like, yeah. well, you know, I'm kind of, struggling i have to stay late all the time to get one or the other done because now i've got two jobs so yeah exactly so that's that's kind of what i took over from um because that, that guy was was exactly that he was he was a, a design engineer who also did all the it stuff so mm -hmm. he was sort of managing or trying to to juggle those two two roles and i just kind of came in as look i can do both anyway so just from day one has been it's been both really 
Right. Yeah. So. Well, that's good. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't a surprise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I knew what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> or, or evolving into one than the other. I mean, in schools, I've seen mm. a few schools where I've seen yeah, a teacher starts taking over the kind of the, the IT mm -hmm. network. I mean, when I first started teaching, schools didn't have networks. And right. then it's slowly introduced and you kind of, it's, first of all, it's just like a teacher. And then in some schools, it can maybe they're a bit bigger. They'll have kind of somebody who's kind of like, ah, you're not a teacher, but you know about networks, which can mm -hmm. sometimes be disastrous because they don't know about teaching. So they kind of <laughs> set things up in a way that teachers can't use it. Or Yeah. Oh, no, it's certainly can't use it. Yeah, it's but it's kind of a necessary I mean, I think there are a lot of aspects of smaller businesses and and schools going through transitions into like this technology period and stuff where you just don't have the funds and the resources to dive mm -hmm. in and hire, you know, a, a complete full blown IT team with all the fanciest stuff and put in fiber and you have to make yeah. do with what you have. Yeah. And if there was a math teacher that had two computers in his classroom or her classroom, then they were like, oh, you know about computers. <laughs> um, can you now connect, uh, connect our printers in the office? And then the next thing, you know, this, you know, three years later, the school has some kind of network and the math teacher is still the right. IT. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it just kind of grows and. And it's nearly always the math involved. teachers. You're right there. It's... Yeah, I think so. I think that was, uh, you know, or at least in, in my era, I was kind of in the, in, you know, came of age in the dawn of the computer home computer era, certainly. And, uh, and some of the first classrooms to get computers were always math classrooms because it was an obvious, yeah. you know, it's it's a it's yeah. a big calculator. I mean, it must belong in the in the math classroom. <laughs> there weren't that many applications, so um, yeah, my first computer class, um, of course, the computers were in the math classroom, and it was kind of experimental. So it was what they called a zero hour class. So you came in before school. So it was before first period. You came in an hour before school and mm. uh, and took computer science. Um, and it was the first time that school, you know, small school. I'm sure that there were other bigger schools in, in bigger places that had, you know, computers and some kind of classroom. But for our school, it was the first ever um, computer science course to be taught the, the year I took it, my junior year. So, yeah, it was... Uh, it was a neat time and that was that kind of set my course because um i always liked making things and computers were the things to make when i was you know kind yeah. of coming of age and and learning about things and heading off to college and so forth so uh, it certainly and then i i got a computer um that same summer well i got a computer that same year earlier in the year i bought one from the back of a magazine a build it yourself computer mm -hmm. um a timex sinclair and i built that and then zx80 or were they called the same names then zx81 um z z81 z no i think it was called like an sx80 or something like that but it was a timex sinclair and it was a it was maybe uh is it white or black it was black. Um, so in the UK, the first, had the little the... membrane keypad. Well, I saw it in the. I went to a trip to the UK and I saw them in the UK, um, and they were white. Um, okay, so the, the white one was the ZX80. In yeah, the UK. and but it was almost the same look. And then I think Timex may have licensed it or something. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I think what so, yeah. that interaction was. And then, and then the... they advertised it in the back of yeah whatever, probably Radio Electronics or something. <laughs> And I bought the kit and you soldered the components on the board yourself and hooked up the little membrane keypad and plugged it into a TV, of course, for your monitor. And 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 your storage device was a cassette tape. If you wanted to record yeah. anything, then it just played audio to a cassette. Um, and I ended up selling that to a literature teacher, my literature teacher, and getting an Apple II. And that's what they taught the class with. So the next summer after I took the class, I got um, I got the computer. And then the teacher wouldn't let me take the class the next year. 
Um, cause he was like, you've had the whole summer to work on this computer. You probably <laughs> like know more about it than I do. And, uh, and, and this was the beauty of, of, I guess, being a, a good kid at a small school. He's like, so I'll tell you what, um, sign up to be my geometry teacher's aide. And, <laughs> and then during geometry class, after you've done, after you're done grading papers or whatever I assign you to do as my teacher's aide then you can just play on the computers. So you'll have a period that you can just play on the computers, but you'll be my, in quotes, teacher's aide. And so I would spend 10 or 15 minutes running through grading geometry papers or whatever at the, <laughs> at the beginning of class. And then I just go over behind the geometry students at the computers and can continue to play on the computers and write grading software and stuff for him but i was gonna say that uh, that's a that's a, absolutely an incentive to grade the papers as quickly as you physically can <laughs> oh that that was the other silly thing this particular teacher he was like um i i tell him that homework is graded but really most of my grade is on the test um is on the test because that's where i really see what you know i just want to make sure you're doing the homework and i don't want to tell him it's not graded because then people won't do it so here's my grading scheme <laughs> Um, I have three boxes. If they didn't do the homework, check the first box. If they did it, it looks like they did most of it and made a good effort, check the second box. And if it looks like they did all of them and they got the, um, you know, most of the right answers, then check the third box. So his grading scheme for homework was kind of like, uh, didn't do it, kind of did it kinda did and it. <laughs> did it and got good answers. Yeah. And so the yeah, so grading went pretty fast, um, on the homework. But, I like that idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wish I'd known that about twenty years ago. Right. Yeah. Don't don't let the students know they're not being graded harshly on the homework, but make it easy on yourself. Right. Yeah. Oh, or totally. even easier on yourself. Get yeah. a teacher's aid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's an even better idea. Yeah. See, I, I mean, Millions. I the first computer I saw in school, I had the the ZX eighty one, which is the black one with the membrane keyboard. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, that, that was one of my best Christmases because I got I got a black and white TV, a computer, and a tape recorder in the same oh, Christmas. So you had the full so setup. You had everything but was, a printer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I never had a printer at home, not until, crikey. I didn't. Until, I never had a printer on that computer, but the, no, um, yes. the teacher that I sold it to, who was my literature teacher, um, he uh, he bought a printer for it. He printed out tests. I mean, he did stuff on that computer that I was like, "Oh man, you had to he had to work to to make that work." <laughs> you know, he would have had to read in different programs all the time because it didn't have enough memory to have more than one thing in memory at a time. Yeah, and he used it like a like a real little computer. And by that time, I had the Apple, and I was like, "Man, I don't know how he how he puts up with <laughs> with all of that." But he was he was jazzed to, to have it, and so. That was another, I, I'm so spoiled that, you know, if there are any, any kids ever listen to this, uh, you know, if you get decent grades and just, you know, are, are good and polite, um, yeah, that's a secret to getting away with everything in, in school. But that same teacher, um, again, that was my senior year. And he was like, I know you're really into doing computer stuff. So if you've done all your reading and you're caught up in literature, um, I'll give you a hall pass and you can just go over to the computer lab and work on <laughs> computer stuff. Just, you have to be here while I take roll. But then when people start reading, if you want to just uh, slip out the door and go over to the computer lab, then uh, you're free to do it. And at some point during the semester, you know, like the notice came out and was like, you know, we, we have too many kids out there with, uh, with hall passes that, you know, are just kind of like permanent hall passes and we've got to rein this in and everything. And I was like, well, I guess I can't go to the computer lab anymore. And he's like, oh no, I'll just give you a hall pass and I'll fill out everything but the date. And if you get caught, just, just tell them and, and, and they'll send it to me and I'll go, oh yeah, I forgot to put the date on it. So, <laughs> so yeah, just be, be a good awesome. kid, be a good kid. And, and, uh, Make yeah. everyone else's yeah. life easier. That's that's the key, isn't it? Yeah, make, make, make everyone else's easier. life easier, and uh, yeah, and and understand their point of view and what what they've got and want done, and uh, yeah, they'll usually treat you pretty good. So. I think if more kids could actually, that, that would be one thing they could learn in school. Yeah, the, the number of kids who make a teacher's life awkward, and they're making their own life awkward as well. Yeah. And it's just like just 
just just do just be nice and do the stuff you're supposed to do. It makes everyone's right. life easier. Get the, everything gets done quicker. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. an easier time of it. Just yeah, I mean, if you, learn that. yeah, if you're if you're you, if you get the material and and you know and you're bored, just just be quiet or help the person next to you or something and 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 move along instead of being disruptive. Um, <laughs> Or if you don't get it, go ask for help. That didn't hit me until I got to college because I did pretty well in in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was small town, rural high school. And so then when I went off to college, um, it, it was a little more fast paced. And, uh, and the coursework and the material was a little more rigorous. And, and But I hadn't learned uh, how to go ask for help and, and how to get help and how to study properly and and budget my time and and so forth which i think is true of a lot of students who um who maybe you know just had the parents that read to them and had exposure to stuff and and got that good jump through school and then at some point in your education you get to that point where you don't know know it anymore it's and a, you haven't learned shock, you haven't learned the skills you need to uh yeah to to do well and so you have to you have to learn those quickly or you or you suffer for it yeah, absolutely. I saw something earlier actually. It was talking about how uh, it was relating about ADHD, mm-hmm. but how particularly young people who are maybe described as gifted, who have ADHD, often don't get diagnosed mm-hmm. because their high intelligence right. lets them kind of they they already work out enough things for themselves. Mm-hmm. That they can they they get stuff done. They get the answers to questions. They they the stuff is easy enough. They can learn it fairly easily, right? And they're all the kind of things that are, make ADHD a, a problem aren't really a problem for them at that young age, right? The yeah, it's actually, it's actually something reach of an point. advantage, yeah. I suppose, in in your yeah. earlier years, um, uh, as far as how our schools are set up and how we typically learn. Um, so, so they often don't get diagnosed, but then they reach a point where, which might, which varies, of course, for, from person to person. It mm. might be when they get mm. to, you know, senior year of high school. It might be when they get to college. It might be when they reach their first job. It might not be until they're kind of, you know, higher up in their working life mm-hmm. where suddenly they reach a point where they've got to, their organizational skills have to be more than just on point. They, their ability to remember short, you know, short-term memory things maybe uh, is now overwhelmed and they reach a point where they, they can no longer cope. Right. And they're often then at a point where maybe diagnosis doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And it's just, you know, they, they got through school without any problems at all, just because they were, they were highly intelligent and the, the work actually wasn't, challenging enough right. and yeah you know, just because of the way you are when you're a, you're a child yeah you know, uh, I, I, mean, I think a lot of it is so down long. to like um misunderstandings of the condition as well because yes the, the the three different sort of types of adhd if you like you know and i think that the as a kid everyone just associates you know adhd with disruptive behavior you know, and yeah. that, that's why you know it, it's hugely undiagnosed. In they're the ones to get spotted. Like they're the ones to get spotted in school. It's the young mm. males who mm. are disruptive, who can't sit still, who are kind of constantly moving around. Uh, they're often rude because they've maybe never been kind of uh, trained, for want of a better phrase, to kind of mm. in this situation you don't do this. In the, these situations you don't do this. Either. And so they haven't necessarily acquired those social skills um right yeah that i mean it's that deadly phrase of you know well boys will be boys which is mm-hmm. often used to excuse very poor behavior um so that's the classic and, and that's where all the diagnoses in, in certainly in british schools tend to hit are right. those mm-hmm. well and it years. wasn't yeah and it, and you know growing up my age it, there there was no diagnosis it was you're just disruptive. You're a troublemaker. Yep. Um, there wasn't really a, a a diagnosis of maybe you know 
if you were dyslexic or something like that, and and it was something that you could, um, then there was some support for that. You know, there was. It's, it's, in, in my days in school, that there, there there wasn't that support for dyslexics either. It was right. they they were often just sort of labeled. Uh, they, right, just a slow. You, reader, you had streams, slow yeah. Runner, you had streams slow, with like yeah. what were called literally called remedial streams mm -hmm. for those who were, let's say, slow learners or whatever. And there wasn't really any support. Sometimes they'd be slightly smaller classes, right? But would just do lower a lower level of work. Mm -hmm. They weren't expected to be able to achieve higher levels of work, which right. which is, is what quite an incredible months. disservice. Yeah. yeah. To, to them totally. there's like yeah yeah that's a um and and then we have our schools and they don't really differentiate because they get money from the state or whatever for gifted classes and so they have high end and low end gifted and once a child's in a gifted program then then they're just in you know so they test them early and because the school wants to get that funding because oh, yeah. there's a, a, there's some, you know, at least theoretical higher cost to serving these gifted children. If they test into a gifted program, low end or high end, they're just in that program forever because the school's getting a little bit of an extra stipend. Um, mm. And so then you're kind of locked in. It's like you're, you're diagnosed and and you're in or you're you know or whatever it triggers it um uh, both of my daughters you know took tests and and went into some kind of gifted program um or my older one did my younger one like missed it by one point but then they were in classes with five people throughout most of school from yeah. like fifth or sixth grade um and so what an advantage that was on, on both yeah. ends, because if they just happened to test in to the gifted program um, on the high end, and not because they were, they just had this raw intellect or anything. It was probably more the fact that, the, you know, they just had parents that had read to them from the time they were born. <laughs> yeah. And so they got it and they could self-study and they could go back and look through the stuff them on their own. And they, and they had someone at home that they could ask questions. Um, yeah. And then as a result, they end up in, in this getting, getting this special treatment where they have classes of seven or eight people, um, you know, and who doesn't learn better where your teacher is able to well, you got the opportunity to interact with seven well. students instead of 37 students. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, and, and kind of move at your own pace with, with other folks who are a little ahead or whatever. So it's uh yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to how to, how to change it. I'm thankful that, you know, that they, they had the advantage, but it is, it is unfair to both, you know, both sets of students. Mm, yeah, totally. And, and I think there's an element of, I mean, in the UK, we, we sometimes refer to what's called the postcode lottery when it comes to there, this actual postcode mm -hmm. lottery, which is kind of a right. lotto type thing, but there's right. kind of, a, there's a postcode lottery depending on, you know, which schools you went to. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I mean, just as an example, uh, I was uh, chatting uh, online with Kelly, the gentleman maker a few weeks ago. And he was saying he's, I, I, I think he's a year older than me, possibly the same age, but he's, we're, we're about the same age. So we went through school, schooling right. the same sort of era. And he was saying, it was actually going back to the computers. He was able to study a computer science O level. So in the UK, at age 16, students nowadays do what are called GCSEs, general students right. in secondary education. Mm -hmm. Prior to 1988, uh, you had uh, different courses. There was one called O level, which was ordinary level. And there was a certificate of secondary education, a CSE, which was for uh, sort of weaker students. Mm -hmm. uh, after 88 they kind of merged it into GCSEs and you just had foundation and higher right. um, to kind of differentiate but he was saying he did an O level in computer science and I, I never even knew such a thing existed my school didn't have that I mean we had right. we had a few uh, when I joined I think it was actually possibly after I joined they got hold of uh, 
I want to say a couple, but it might have been as many as four mm -hmm. uh, BBC micro model Bs, which right. were the kind of, uh, I, I, in some ways, it's the, the ancestor of the Raspberry Pi. It was mm. designed as a computer that could go into schools. It was something that young people could have access to. Yeah, it was the early days right. of home computing. The, the, it was an exceedingly, for its time, it was an exceedingly powerful and adaptable machine. Had a massive array of input-output board connections, and it was it, there was a lot of support. There was a, you know, it ran basic, and there was kind of it was a. It was a slightly more advanced version of BASIC than was on the the, the Sinclair Timex right. mm -hmm. ZX81s. Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, it just had it had more functions, and yeah, it was it was a very very powerful machine. And of course, mm -hmm. they also introduced they had floppy drives, so you could record right. your uh, data yeah. onto. And I mean, the scope for use was was fantastic. And yeah, we had I think we I think we had. When I left, there were maybe half a dozen, right? In the, oh, in the yeah. math department, yeah. um, and I think there was, there was there was one or possibly two computers in the kind of the school office, and that was the extent of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very much the same, and I think it was just driven by a math teacher that showed that had yeah. an interest that was willing to support and say, "I'll teach a computer class." Otherwise, yeah. I don't think we would have had. I don't think I would have had an opportunity to have access to computers in high school, especially the small rural high school I went to. Um, and and that just, that, just was yeah. a luck of the draw that he was interested, had yeah. gone to some conferences, had become interested, suggested yeah. it. Somebody probably wrote a grant. You know, I don't know how that all happened, but um, yeah, it was, it was unusual. And the, yeah, we have something similar. It's not really as, maybe as defined, but we have like college prep. So at some point based on standardized test scores or something, um, you have, you're kind of differentiated as you go from middle school to high school into, you should be on the college prep track or, or on the other track that doesn't have, um, I think it requires one less math class, one less science class or something. It's very similar, but I think it, and it, it is that randomness, though, isn't it? Yeah, that, yeah. Can but it's that day. You know, if you had an off country. day on the wrong day, yeah, it could change your whole trajectory. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm going to stay off the 11 plus rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have there's there's 168 grammar schools in in the UK. There used to be more. Mm -hmm. uh, grammar schools were introduced. I mean, grammar schools have been actually been around for a very very long time, uh, probably in excess of 100 years, and. There were grammar schools and they were not grammar schools, secondary models they were called. The majority of the grammar schools were actually wiped out, oh, I want to say in the 70s, but some and what, what age group And what age group was that? Uh, so it's for 11, 11 to 18. Okay. Um, but to get into a grammar school, you, you sat in an exam school. called the 11 okay. plus. Um, and the 11 plus, historically, and, and still today in some parts of the country, so I, I live in a part of the country that still has it. Um, and I used to teach at grammar school. I, and from teaching point of view, grammar schools are amazing. Um, right. You get to teach amazing students. They're not all high achieving, but you get some really high achieving students. You get to have really good conversations. Mm -hmm. You get to teach. You don't have to crowd control too much. Right. And so it can, from a teaching point of view, they're absolutely amazing. But from a moral point of view, kind of thinking sort of the greater good for the country they're, they're horrendous particularly for those who don't pass you get yeah, students I mean, taking an exam be, yeah. they're 10 years old when they take the exam determining what they're going to be and do when they get in their age 11 onwards right and what kind of education 80 percent 80 percent of the kids don't pass it or mm -hmm. even if they pass it they don't get into the grammar school so they're being told mm -hmm. age 11 you're not very good yeah no, I mean, yeah, what a horrible and system. Some, it sticks well, it, to them. Or, and and you mind. don't have and you don't have another chance. You don't you know, there's not another no. chance next year, so why bother? And that's that, that's the big yeah. change I would make. If they're gonna keep grammar schools, I would actually change it so that at every year the students who get to the grammar because the, the, one of the offsets as well is that some who get to the grammar school and they get a lot of tutoring to to get to the grammar school to pass eleven plus. There's a massive mm. industry of mm -hmm. 11 plus tutors but when they get in 
the pressure gets taken off by the parents and the parents don't kind of go, well, they're in the grammar school now. They're going to be okay. Don't need to do anything now. Right. Yeah. And so they don't work. So I, I, I would sort of change it slightly and say, well, look, if you're going to stay in the grammar school, you've got to prove you're good enough. If you're not good enough, bye bye. You're out. Mm-hmm. Right. But you get, you get a chance every year to sort of reapply. Yeah. No, and I, so the student who's maybe sense. a late bloomer mm-hmm. could join. I mean, there are, there are massive issues kind of in how you would operate that because you'd have to make sure that students all study the same thing every year. Which right, and then you have to yeah, happen. then you have to keep keep them all on the same track to even have yeah. the opportunity because as soon as you don't get in, then you immediately start falling behind if you're not being yeah. taught what's expected yeah. of you. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I used to find this. Your, your, your point this of, um, of telling a kid that they're not good enough. I mean, they, my mum's the youngest of three girls. And her two older sisters uh, both passed the 11 plus. And my mum didn't. So she's even, you know, at, th- at this point now, she, she still mentions that as a as a kind of a turning point for her. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she's, it's not to say that she's not academic. Mm-hmm. She obviously is. She's incredibly intelligent. Um, her talents are in making and creating things. Um, right. You know, so she, she's much more in that way of doing things so for her the 11 plus wasn't really uh you know she wasn't academically geared for it at that point whereas her right. sisters were a little bit more sort of book mm-hmm. um but that was a bit of a turning point for her and it's still a a thing that you know she, it, it kind of feels like a bit of a bad mark on her record almost oh yeah not, no it? certainly yeah. i mean i yeah you know, even I though mean, she's, she's in my in my daughter's classes and stuff that you know, just barely did or barely didn't get in and yeah. intellectually ability. I mean, they were, you know, so similar, but, but one of them feels as though from, for some arbitrary reason, um, because they weren't, um, weren't as quick at reading the tests yeah. or they were mm. very, um, thoughtful in my younger daughter's case, excellent marks in school, given the time to take the test, um, to do the work, excellent work, but really considers it, really thinks about it. Yeah. And so on a timed yeah. test, doesn't do as well, runs out of time because I'm, I, you know, she's, she's pondering what, what is that really right? And going back and checking sort of stuff yeah. um, and being penalized for it. You know, so and, it's, and it's crazy, isn't it? Because I mean, I mean, there, yes, there are certain jobs where speed of thought is essential. Mm-hmm. You, you don't want a pilot, for example, who's kind of having to go, oh, right now, do I? Okay, so I've lost an <laughs> engine. Um, now, I know I've got to do something with the throttle with the other engine. Uh, uh, what do I have to do? Uh, do I maybe turn around out yeah, of the way of this iceberg? Exactly. <laughs> they, right. they've, got to be able to, they've got to be able to make you know, quick decisions very, very quickly. They've, they've got right. to be able to, you know, similarly a, 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 trauma, a, trauma, a trauma doctor in an ER, you know, yeah. They they have to be able to make decisions very very quickly right. because somebody's life depends upon it. But if you're working on you know, if, if you're working in ninety nine percent of the other jobs that are available in the world, does it matter if you take an extra five minutes to work something out? Right, right. Or even in those positions, um, you know, what if what if you really pondered and considered all of the possible outcomes of flying with one engine, and had given it all the thought that it deserves during, mm-hmm. during training or leading up to that, then you probably still make a better decision in yeah. that moment um, yeah. than someone who, who very quickly happened to make the right decision on the test. Um, and given the test four more times might not make the same decision. So, yeah, I mean, there's uh, the other aspect. But I suppose of it that's, as well. I mean, that's kind of the reality of our of our existence is is you know there are all these little inflection points and you're on one side or the other and yeah, absolutely and hopefully hopefully in some you you end up on the on the better side <laughs> or at least the better side for you more often than not. Yeah. It's providing the escape routes that isn't it at different stages. Yeah, given that I've I've mentioned before about a guy who started his degree at the same time as me, physics degree, he was thirty three when he started. He left school at fourteen because that in that time you could, right? And 
Yeah, he left school with no qualifications, became a bricklayer because that's what you do. If you've got no qualifications, you go and work mm -hmm. in construction. And eventually, when he was on day release in his early 20s at college because he needed a qualification in order to make further progression rather than just being a labourer, mm -hmm. uh, somebody said, oh, you, you did you know that you're dyslexic? And he's like, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, yeah, you might find it easier if you use one of these newfangled computer things for reading and, and for writing. And he did. And I mean, I, I think he's probably be retired now because, yeah, he probably be retired. But, yeah, he's got a PhD in nuclear physics now and has right. spent time working at CERN. <laughs> yeah. 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 What, what, what opportunities are we missing as a society? Yeah. By, you know, by not trying to find and and and, and exploit if you will everyone's <laughs> best abilities in a way in a way that's you know that's amenable to that and and well. I, I i believe it I, it's probably a similar sort of situation in, in the states but certainly in the uk yeah you know, those who show academic ability at an early age are, are kind of pushed into kind of academic programs and those mm -hmm. who don't are pushed into vocational programs mm -hmm. right. and yet I mean, how many, I mean, I, I, I've thought about this quite a lot in the last few years. And I, I, I sometimes think, would I have been happier in a career? I mean, I, I, a great teaching career. I, I you know, I enjoy teaching. I, I like the challenge of teaching. And, you know, I don't regret becoming a teacher. But I sometimes wonder whether maybe I would have had a more fulfilling career, even mm -hmm. more so if I had gone into something that had an element of creativity to it, you know, mm. or if I had gone into something where instead of having to use my brain, I was using my hands, right. uh, obviously brain as well, but yeah, actually something where I was maybe making something or doing something mm -hmm. more hands-on because I think possibly that might right. have been. Yeah. I think about, that's a I think about that often as well, because I wanted to, I just wanted to build computer stuff. I wanted to build electronics and build computers and program mm -hmm. computers. And I just wanted to dive in and, and do that. And so at the time I was um, getting ready to graduate high school, um, my dad had, had remarried and my stepmom was just insistent that I go off to a four-year college. And I just wanted to go to a trade school that had an electronics and computer program. I wanted to go off and just dive into building and using computers um but you know she was uh was insistent on no you're going to go to a to a four-year college you know you'd it'd be silly not to um go off to a four-year college and get a, an actual bachelor's degree in something um and and i'm thankful i did and and you know and i think there was as much a component of um kind of a keeping up with the Joneses. She was a friend of, <laughs> you know, a lot of people in the community yeah. that were, that were, you know, teachers or lecturers or whatever. And, and, uh, and didn't want to be the one whose kid wasn't going off to college. Um, but it, yeah. I think it worked in my favor because you can always, you know, it's a good, it's a good fallback to have that four year degree. And then if you choose to go off and just do something with your hands or, or get more into the hands on, then you're free to do that. And so uh, it, it certainly worked out well. And there were times where I was ready to just, I wanted to start my own business and I almost left college. Um, mm. And, you know, just, just a lot of fortunate little, little twists in life where, um, you know, I, I remember calling my dad and, uh, and my dad was like, Christ child, you could stand on your head for that long. You know, just, just, go do this last semester, you know, or whatever it was, it wasn't, I didn't have that much left. Um, and, uh, that was kind of his take on it. But then I was actually in the admissions office getting ready to disenroll. And they said, um, as part of this, we have to call your advisor and my advisor, um, you know, known computer science, computer scientist, um, ran came he came he was red faced and out of breath when he got to the admissions office and said don't do this this is this, this is a silly thing to be doing this late in your schooling you know mm. take take those last couple those last semesters of classes or whatever and and so 
you know, I was just, I, I was lucky to, to have some things happen that, or I guess I was lucky. I don't know because had I, had I just gone to, um, had I just gone to trade school, it would have been here in Albuquerque and it would, would have been during the heyday of Microsoft here in Albuquerque. So you just, you just never know. It's, it's quite uh -huh. likely had I not gone to college, I would have gone to a trade school um, here in town when Microsoft was starting out here in Albuquerque and I might've been Microsoft Scooped employee up. number five. So you just never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, for mine, I, I did a lot more of the practical stuff at college. I, I never went and got a degree, mm -hmm. but I picked up a lot of um, smaller courses. So six month courses that were, right. you know, a, a lower level of course, but I, I did, lots of different things because I, I was able to get the courses for free uh, at the age I was at. Right. So, you know, I, I covered, you know, various different bits of web design and uh, I, I did some visual basic and I did some multimedia stuff and some graphic stuff and Photoshop stuff and bits of like computer building and servicing and repair and things like that, but didn't take things like computer science. And now I'm sort of kicking myself thinking, well, if I hadn't taken, you know, multimedia and I'd taken computer science instead, I might be in a completely different position now with the, the stuff that I'm trying to learn, right. you know, as a, in my mid thirties, sort of trying to find time to learn something that's a technical skill at a different level to where I would have learned it, a computer science degree at, or not degree, but a computer science you know diploma or something so right. below degree level but it would have given me a you know a kind of a a, a technical shunt up from where i'm at potentially but yeah i mean if with the with the aptitude and resources that we have now um, yeah, absolutely i'm now i don't think that it really it's easier than ever yeah, for me to do and i think we're finally recognizing that that should not be a criteria for employment or for you know i mean absolutely. if you can demonstrate your aptitude um and your abilities then how you learned it should be less important, I think, at this point. I mean, I think a lot of times, maybe in the past, that that degreed um, learning was important because it was the only way you could really, you know, have some insurance when you were hiring someone, yeah. or at least you felt like you did. I don't, I don't know that even then it, it, it did. It's so individual. You know, there are people who are just really good at studying. There are people who are just really good yeah. at memorization. There are people who are really good at school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they may not Some be the best at, 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 in yeah. application, um, yeah. in applying that. I, I mean, I've known people who could have aced the test and asked a direct question about how to apply the knowledge on the test, totally <laughs> floundered. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I think that it's... Uh, you know, we all just find our way. And if you're the sort of people like we are that, you know, that are in the maker community that just thrive on learning new things and have somehow found a way to either not be fearful of that failure that are taking on that next thing or to manage that fear or have found tools to say, to figure out a way around that, you know, that beginning of doing things and just dive in and do it, then you know, some kind of formal education is become somewhat unnecessary. Absolutely. I think like you say that the, you know, even something like a degree is, is kind of, it's a, it's essentially still a foundation, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a proof that you're able to learn to a certain level mm -hmm. or a certain degree, I suppose. Um, you know, it's, it's that, it's almost just that confirmation that, uh, yes, you can take in a lot of information about a thing and prove that you've taken in that information. But it, it, it's, like you say, it, it's neither here nor there for, for this day and age where you can just kind of go and spend a, a day on YouTube and, and pick mm -hmm. up a new skill. You know, it's, it's such a completely different way of navigating the world as we know it now compared to even, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, certainly, certainly knowledge is no longer in these kind of uh, um, silos of knowledge. It's everywhere for the for the taking at this point for for us in first world countries. It's, you know, I mean, I'm sure that it's uh, it's more difficult elsewhere.
but yeah. you know, we're, we're really fortunate, very fortunate to just be like, oh, today I'm just going to spend the whole day doing a deep dive and learning something I don't know anything about. And if it mm -hmm. intrigues me, I'll just keep going and become very good at it. Probably, you know, more than, I mean, I mean, you can learn from people who are the best educators in that field and you can self-select who you learn from that, that resonates yeah. with you. I mean, you can go out yeah. to the MIT courseware and, and just watch entire lecture series of classes um, from the top people in, in the field. Mm -hmm. um, if that, if that works for you, if not, you know, one of their students will re-relate it in some different, <laughs> different way or, or someone else. And you'll, you'll, and maybe you watch three of those. I mean, I always, I, that's the way I like to learn is I'll watch on a topic from three or four different points of view. And yep. then you feel like you're kind of filling in that, that Venn diagram of all, all angles of it. Whereas if you have the one teacher, you hear their, their take on it. Uh, and, that that's, uh, tends to be my approach as well is, is to try and uh, take something in from a few different vectors and then to try and relay that back out as well to someone, even if it's just explaining a concept to a friend. And if, if you can then explain that on, you know, even if it's, you know, mm -hmm. Steve or Duncan or, or Andy, you know, to, to just explain back something I've just learned from a couple of different videos or, uh, you know, something I've been playing with or experimenting with. So if you can then re-explain that to someone else and them understand it, you know, you've kind of got enough of a grasp in your head to kind of finish learning that bit and move on to the next thing. Right. Yeah, I, it's uh, and and teaching someone else is an excellent way to um, to test your knowledge of it and learn even yeah. more yourself because they'll ask a question from a different point of view or some aspect of it and it's like, well, if that's true, then why does this happen? And you're like, I don't know, hadn't thought of that. Let me Absolutely let me think best, about yeah. let me think about that for yeah. for a little bit so longer. Why, and, why isn't the sky purple? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, and I remember one of the examples I always think of it, it, in having this sort of conversation is I, I I did well in geometry. I like the kind of physicality and the and the connection to the real world of geometry. Mm -hmm. And then I remember in uh, in algebra, the teacher was very much um, kind of memorize and learn the formulas, and not a lot of um, applications and then when we were doing trigonometry, even though you would think that it would be totally obvious because it's called trigonometry, um, it didn't really make the connection with, you know, sine, cosine. Um, we're learning all of these identities and, and the, the sine and cosine. And it was much after high school when I had, had learned all that, that, and maybe this happened in high school and I just missed it or something that someone drew a unit circle up on the board and drew the radius going around the circle and the line dropping down from the radius and its relation as it went around the circle to the length of, you know, if you want to imagine it as a shadow or whatever, that point on, on the axis being, and then plotting that is a sine wave yeah. or on the Y axis cosine. And, and it was like, Oh, why didn't someone show me this? This is all totally obvious to me now. A few years mm -hmm. after, um, or maybe even more, after having learned all of that and, and thought, wow, if I would have had that, just that little bit of context of what that means in my physical world, yeah. um, how much more intrigued and interested I would have been in the subject and how much more I would have taken it in and, and remembered it. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's, that's sort very of individual. Is... Absolutely. And that, that's something I've been doing with my daughter recently with her, like Matt's homework is, you know, if she's struggling with something on fractions, well, let's, let's convert those fractions into decimals, see if that's any easier. Okay, well, let's mm -hmm. change it to ratios. Let's change it to this. And it's that right. understanding that you can, you can just reapply those, mm -hmm. those subsets of that number into just a different shape and to see how it fits. And right. I used to and work then... with a guy who, it was terrible at normal arithmetic, but was really, really quick at doing arithmetic in binary. So he hmm. would quite often, if given um, a, a something to work out, 
he would he would find it easier to convert it all to binary, do the addition in binary, and then convert it back into oh how odd numbers. Yeah, and that was just how his brain worked better in that way. I'm gonna I'm gonna start just writing everything down in hex. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, hey, Tex. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it, yeah, certainly yeah. on a unit by unit, it's it's certainly much easier um, to, do, to do things in binary. But I would have never thought yeah. that anyone found it easier to convert to binary um, and then do the math in binary and and convert back. Yeah, um, it, it, yeah. Was, it was glorious to watch. Just yeah. seeing this, this guy, you know, sort of in his early 20s, just scribbling scribbling out right okay yeah that's that's fine you know right what have you just done oh it's too easy <laughs> to do it in binary it's fine it's... right no, no. explain why <laughs> <laughs> why is it why is it easier yeah. to do why are you broken <laughs> it but it, it i mean maths particularly it's, it's interesting how some people will operate very well with certain aspects of math but not others so yeah. you know, my 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 youngest, for example, anything in terms of money and uh, ratios of money or ratios of, of like recipes, mm -hmm. doing like that, no problem at all. But throw in some algebra, and everything becomes a little bit harder. Yeah, and I think oftentimes it's that just like I was talking about with the geometry, it's like missing that little element that that then. The if you can find it, it together, if you can find it? it to make that connection, then it's like, yeah. oh, so it, mm -hmm. X can be anything, you know, or what? I mean, it's just that however it was explained, you locked on to something that was maybe incorrect and that made it seem really hard to you and then explained three other ways. You go, oh, so that that belief I had about how that worked was not true. And now I see that this is this is how it really works. Now it makes sense to me. Yeah, I, I, one of my, my one of my brothers, um, he ha had that sort of chip on his shoulder of of like I, I'm I'm not an intellectual. I, I I work with my hands. I I I can't do all this fancy maths and algebra and stuff. I'm I'm never going to use that. Never going to need to know what X is. Couldn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, all day in, in his work, he's writing <laughs> right. things like parts lists and doing, you know, like invoices and things like that. And I'm like, look, you are doing algebra right. constantly. Every single day you are doing this stuff. Yep. It's just written differently just because it says X instead of quantity. You know, it right. doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. It's just it's the same thing. You are doing it. You are okay. You know, you are better than you right. think. And I think, yeah, I think that's a, a lot of people's hurdle with coding. Um, mm. They they see it as something that is, I mean, certainly if you really delve into it, it's it's akin to mathematics. But if you just want to make your Arduino do something, or you want to, you know, write write code to uh, solve some some iterative problem or something that lends itself to it, it's kind of following a recipe and, and creating, you know, making, you know, and there's nothing, there's no harm in making a mistake. You write it, it fails. It tells you these days, it tells you why it failed. Um, yeah. You correct that. Um, you start out with two lines and it works. It's real easy to build up. It's not like you, like a, a skill where, you know, you're three days in before you see if it works or not. You know, you're a few minutes in before you see if it yeah. works or not, and you go a few minutes deeper into it. And so, um, you know, I, I, try to, I try to eliminate any mystique or, you know, any people who have, um, you know, this block of trying to start to start coding. But it's interesting the way you phrase that, because that that is exactly the the, the hurdle that I struggle with. I, I can I can write something in pseudocode you know that, that mm -hmm. whole idea of of how the program is going to work but it, it's absolutely it's the syntax that trips me up and it's only right. from previous times when i've tried to learn coding in various things i mean i, I did uh, over a year of visual basic at college you know to a, right. a reasonable level in writing right. various bits and bobs mm -hmm. but it's that previous experience of trying to write something it failing and not having any way of finding out 
why or how. It felt like yeah. I needed to learn more to be able to fix where I was at. So it was, it was that kind and of it, well, and that's a very that's very frustrating problem. too. That that's really frustrating because you have the hard part done. You have the algorithm, which is is the difficult yeah. part, and then being you know it's like it's like having a concept, um, and then trying to explain it to someone in a foreign language. You know yeah. that, how if frustrating would that be to it. have to have the whole concept and you don't have the words to try and explain, um, and and that's probably just like that foreign language. You know, you you try it and you make mistakes and you and it's and it's difficult and you do it in in naive ways to begin with and then you learn you know more elegant ways to do it and uh, um, so it's uh, you can't use yeah, uh, universal a process. Hand and then, and then once you do it yeah and once you do it um, in one language and then maybe you try it in a different language it gets it gets much easier because um, there, there's similarities and you're like oh I remember that's what was causing me the problem in this you know, mm -hmm. last time I tried it writing in, in, in this language. Um, and so you start to see more and more similarities and that's true across everything making. I mean, the more different things you branch out into, whether it's woodworking or the welding or drawing skills. or computer or whatever, then you have all of these associative things that you can kind of hang it off of and you can be like, Oh yeah. Welding. It's kind of like icing a cake. You, you're, you know, you're squeezing out some molten metal and, and you have a couple of parameters you can control. You can squeeze harder and more comes out, or you can move faster and, and, um, we'll and less comes up. out, or you can go, go slower and squeeze less as so you can play with these parameters. And yeah. And so there's all these parallels that the more skills you pick up, the easier new skills become each time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, acquisition, the acquisition is, yeah. Acquisition of skills. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you can sew two pieces of fabric together, you can, you know, glue two pieces of plywood together, and you can glue two pieces of metal together, and you can stitch two pieces of leather together, and you know, it's, it's all those you know big planar materials that, yeah, it's right. Just, it's just figuring out the yeah uh, which buttons do which on the new bit of kit that you're using. Um, I was listening to uh, Dave Bowers' uh, new podcast recently with uh, with Patty. And yeah, that's brilliant. something I hadn't really thought of. And she said, sewing is, is different in that all of your, all of your work is usually hidden inside all of your seams and everything. You do it inside <laughs> out and everything is hidden inside. And you've, and I was like, hadn't really considered that. And so then I'm off trying to think of some other skill where you, you do it inside out. And then, um, and it's like draw, so that, old drawers that, with hidden belt cells on the sides. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was like, oh, I hadn't hadn't really thought of it that way. That was a really really good episode. It, it mm -hmm. was kind of yeah. I didn't realize about... her extensive background in puppetry. I mean, I knew she had sewed, and I knew she did some sewing um, for puppetry, but I didn't realize how big a part of yeah, her too. career and her expertise that that was. So. Spoiler alert, because that's my lesson for tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we, we will we will say no more. Yeah. No, so, no, it's, it's, it's very, very good. Yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely two for two very good episodes so far. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, starting off with Berkey, you can't go wrong. Right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's definitely starting on a high, but yeah, I think. It was, it was fascinating listening to, to Patty talk about kind of the, the problem solving. I mean, and, and that's what the whole kind of point of the, right. the podcast is. But, mm -hmm. yeah, talking about the problem solving and, and what those problems are and, and how you've got to solve them and what limitations you have on solving them. It, it's, it's a, it was a really, really good listen. Um, it's, it's interesting that, I mean, you hear that over and over in in the maker community and then, of course, being in my work community um it, it's like well that's what what you do all day is is problem solving to the point yeah. that i think i'm so um i i'm never outside of that world um and so i'm thinking well isn't that just human isn't that what everybody strives to do is just solve problems every day and i think there's a whole world of humans mm -hmm. out there who just would not want to just say, oh yeah, I, I enjoy solving problems. That's what I do all day. But, but in my 
my bubble. Um, it's like, well, isn't that what everybody exists to do is just solve, solve the next problem all day. And isn't that what everyone derives, you know, value and pleasure from? And I don't think it's true. I just don't think that, I think that's kind of outside of my sphere of people that I interact with. It's the difference between people who, you know, decide on what ingredients they want on their sandwich every day, or just get exactly the same meal every day, every time. You know, it's it's the the. the well, I, I get the same thing every day because I'm such a I'm yeah. a not a picky eater, <laughs> and so I just don't want to occupy any any time with. And so to the point that my coworkers started making fun of me, and so then I just started going down the menu from we go to this sandwich shop. And I just got the same sandwich because I looked through the menu the first day I went in and I thought that sandwich sounds pretty good. I had it. It wasn't bad. And so I just kept ordering it. And and they and so they started kind of, you know, making a joke of it. And so then I just started at menu item number one. And then the next day, the next time we go in, I order menu item number two and menu item number three. And Have they noticed like, the no, pattern it's yet? not it's not that I'm so picky that I only eat this sandwich. It's that I care so little that this sandwich is fine. So I'll just start. It's I'll just start ordering a different sandwich every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the Steve Jobs black polo jeans. Oh yeah, kind of I mean, mode, yeah. In it? fact, I black shirt and jeans um, is is what I wear to work. Um, I've got removing a whole bunch that of... cognitive load, isn't it? You've got so much yeah. problem solving is the day to day life. That yeah, and I, I mean, I think that's and... kind of a you know, kind of an arrogant way to you know, like I've got so much to think about. I can't even think about my, my clothes. It, I think it's, it's lazy. Just the, <laughs> it's just me being lazy. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. I think <laughs> it's not, that's it? not it's, that I need to use my brain power for other things. It's just that I'm so lazy. No, I don't but there's, use my there's brain no power fun in it. I think that's yeah. the thing though, isn't it? Is, is you've got the people who, who solve the big problems in, you know, in, in this thing isn't working or this thing's just failed or this thing needs redesigning or optimizing or something like that. That, that is, uh, mm -hmm you know a, a, um, a more fun problem than what shall i wear today or what shall i right. have on my sandwich it is that like i, I need to eat something right that, that there's food i will eat the food right. or i need food to put is, clothes on because people yeah. tell me that i need to put clothes on so you know going into the outside world i better protect the shell you know grab clothes yeah very <laughs> yeah. yeah very much so it's very uh, very pragmatic and and that's kind of how i am about about things maybe even to a fault where it's just like um you know well this doesn't make any sense to worry about um exactly that. you know this is this is sufficient this this you know like you said this this covers my body um it it has some sense i'm you know i wear shirts with you know something written on them or whatever that is projects my personality or what i'm interested in so you know it's not entirely uh, you know nothing but uh but yeah, very you don't much. Agonize over it every day. That's yeah, I don't thing. agonize over it, and I don't. Uh, I don't go out and try to find the thing that. Uh, that's not true, because <laughs> as a as a nerd, we don't go out and try to find the clothes that might impress people who are like into clothes. But yeah, nope. yeah, we are going to buy that shirt from Smarter Every Day or from you know, some website or some maker that we enjoy following to let people know that we enjoy their content or we we like what they do or or whatever so yeah I, you know it's certainly not without thought it's just a different kind of different kind of thought definitely i, I, I think you know, laziness i think can, though picking on that can be it can be a really good thing i, I often used to tell my students that you know physicists mathematicians are often quite lazy in some of the things they do and that's why instead of writing out a an equation is speed equals distance over time. We will use you know, V equals D over T. Um, and oh, yeah. Yeah, just that sort of, yeah, it's it's just a way of being lazy. Well, and yeah, and it's also kind of an impediment to, to people's ability to learn math, I think, because it becomes so ingrained and you've done it so long that it becomes the language you speak as a mathematician or as a teacher or as someone who's seen something a hundred times uh, and it's true of learning anything new. A big part of it is the acronyms or the little buzzwords yeah. or in math, all of the stand-ins for, the syntax, you know, it? it's a symbol that has this whole background of meaning. Um, 
and you drop in, you know, Delta T or whatever. Um, well, I was thinking of, and it's, I was thinking and it's like, that. and it's like, oh, that always means a change. And, you know, it's like, well, who's, who told me that at what, you know, at what introductory yeah. math class did they just like put down all these symbols and say, when you see this, it means this whole concept. And you're just supposed to know that when you see, you know, this, this symbol. So, uh, yeah, a lot of learning is of anything is just learning the vocabulary of that particular skill. And yep. so you're not totally lost when you're trying to read the material on it and don't know what, what's going on. What question uh, to Google? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that, I think that's something that uh, is also true about the maker community is we're probably pretty good Googlers. Um, we're the people who someone says, I can't find anything on this. And we walk up and we go, Oh, really? And you type in something and you find it right away. And I think that's that, that skill after skill after skill after associations between the mm -hmm. two. And you're like, well, I would probably find that related to this. And so you just have, you just know the right vocabulary to get you started in that direction because it's similar to something else you've done before. Yeah. And people who, who aren't as much of skill as a skill collector may not have the right associations to type in the right thing to. There's a concept that my friend introduced me to about 15, 20 years ago, something like that. And it was the, 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 the two types of people in the world that are the, the people who know what things are called and the people who know what things do. Mm -hmm. And they're not necessarily the same skill. And it's, it's sort of, uh, generally most people would generally fall into one or the other right um and it, it makers tend to be that kind of bit in the middle of the venn diagram that that kind of overlap of the people right. who kind of know, often what, know it's what it's called and, and what it does so you can you can link those two things together in, in asking the right questions if you don't understand the skill yet uh, yeah that's very interesting i yeah i started a business with my sister years ago she started doing a lot of small business um helping small businesses set up their accounting and books and so forth. And I used to go out with her and, and give lectures and stuff, or just, or just talk about it, give presentations, I guess you should say. And, uh, and, and she made that comment. It was like, well, I'm not really qualified to be talking to people about this. You're the person that's, that's doing this. And she was like, but you're really good at translation. Um, and I think a lot of makers are really good about translating, about understanding yeah. the topic. Maybe they're not an expert, but they understand the topic well enough to, uh, you know, to be able to tell someone else, but not just tell someone else verbatim what that topic is, but translate it into, uh, into a language or a metaphor or something that that person, you know, you have a conversation with that person, you find out what they're into, and then mm -hmm. you're able to describe this new thing in their language in, you know, in some Absolutely. context that they're familiar with. And so you find out, um, and, and I find myself doing that a lot. I'll have a conversation with someone, the conversation will change to something that they're just learning or have not, don't know anything about that I do. And I will just describe it completely different to that person than mm -hmm. I would to someone else, because I've just had a conversation of what, what their language is. And so I try to, you know, tell them in their, in, in their language um what it I is think, which probably sounds uh, really bizarre to someone else when i'm describing you know welding in terms of crocheting or something but, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's the traits also i mean there's two two aspects there it traits of of, of good teaching of being mm -hmm. a good teacher that ability to recognize just stepping back slightly recognize that there is language vocabulary jargon mm -hmm. and being able to explain that to students hopefully at an early enough point that they kind of kind of can make use of it right and introducing sort of terminology introducing ideas um introducing concepts that help them and then being able to particularly when somebody doesn't understand to be able to translate it into something whether that's through analogy models metaphors whatever that they can understand mm -hmm. i think those are the right. kind of the traits which may vary from student to student and mm -hmm. it's very difficult if you've got a class of 30 plus and you're trying to right. explain it hopefully your first explanation the majority get it. well ideally everyone will get it right but that's the yeah but that's certainly the 
I have a problem with a 37 dates. student classroom yeah. is do you have the time to, to, to explain it in enough different ways that you convey it to everyone? Yeah. Or do you just blindly go, go, go with what, so, what we've yeah. been doing for the last whatever years? And we always explain it this way. And the people who get it that way, great. And the other people, you know, good luck. Um, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so much of that, isn't there? And and and, and sometimes it, sometimes it's just down to the ignorance of the teacher. You know, if you don't get it, you don't get it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's certainly the way physics, particularly, you thought because this is the subject I know best. Yeah, you know, it's it used to be a case of well, if you don't get it, you don't get it. I'm not right. explain it any different you're way. Just not not cut you're, for you're, physics. You're not cut up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but sometimes it's it's down to the, that kind of almost it's that lack of time you know you don't mm -hmm. have enough time to explain it 30 different ways because you've got 30 different people in the classroom and there isn't yeah you know, your explanations aren't reaching it whether that's because you're just not good enough at explaining something or whether it's mm -hmm. a com such a complex idea that it does require more time than actually exists right yeah i think there's a time when people when you realize as someone who you know is answering questions or you get to an age where people are asking you um, to explain something that that you realize there there is a way to explain it that is crystal clear to you and mm -hmm. at some point you realize um, that that is not not the crystal clear way to explain it it just is for me yeah um, and for someone else I could explain it in, in a way that seems obtuse to me and that will be their crystal clear way to explain it. And so I'll struggle through another way of explaining it. I've heard that makes no sense to me, but maybe it makes sense to them. Um, instead of just being indignant that they don't, that they don't get it and when explained in the way that makes sense to me. So I think we've solved most of education's problems. No. <laughs> Well, I identified them. I don't know if we've solved them. We've certainly yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it's true. We haven't. Yeah, yeah. Just, just put a big ring around them all. Yeah, just the easy, easiest step. Right. Talk among but yourselves. I, but I do, I do wonder, though, <laughs> we talk about kind of you know, makers and skill acquisition and that, you know, asking questions and, and looking for new skills and making connections. I wonder sometimes whether everyone that could possibly, if you look at the kind of social media side of things, who could be labeled with kind of you know, part of the maker movement. Mm -hmm. I don't think necessarily, and this is not to put anyone down, that they, not everyone necessarily falls into that portion of makers who do make connections and who will acquire different skills. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've, I mean, I've, a number of times over the years, I've taken part in or seen conversations between makers from, let's say, a particular style of making. Mm -hmm. For want of a better one, let's just pick woodwork. And you see people who kind of go, yeah, I, 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 need, I need to do this. And it, there'll be people kind of giving, there'll be answers coming maybe from people who are professional woodworkers mm -hmm. who will go, well, you can do it this way. But then sometimes you'll get kind of, you know, perhaps – the more makery style of makers who are multi-skilled, multifaceted, do work with different mediums, do work with a variety of different tools who will kind of go, yeah, but you could also do this way. And yeah, it's a, it's another way that will work, but you know, the people who perhaps are just one skilled, not one skilled, but have just one focus in their making, maybe don't see an alternative way of doing it. Mm. I mean, I think, I, I mean, just uh, just as a kind of example, the way, you know, I mean, traditionally, if you were clamping down some wood to work on it, you would use a clamp or a stay fast. Yeah, you know, you'd have a, a, a dog hole in your, your bench and you, you put a piece in, you bang it and it stays in place. Or you have a, a, a vice or you, you have some set of encyclopedias. Yeah. I mean, but then, yeah, you <laughs> have the clamps. clamps. Um, <laughs> throw it back. Yeah. But then you have, um, you know, you get, for example, now, you know, a lot of people go, well, I use this kind of, yeah, you know, put some blue tape down, bit of CA blue on one side, put blue tape on the other, bit of, mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, Activator. Uh, or it's really Activator, common. Yeah. yeah and it's really you slap it over. now to do wood glue and CA glue and yeah. just yeah. slap them together, 
pray some, uh, you know, put activator on one side, CA glue on the other, wood glue all around it, slap it together and keep moving. 10 seconds later, yeah. it's it's and solidly it's, in place. And yeah. half an hour later, the wood glue's done its job and it's not coming apart ever. Yeah. yeah. So it's, I don't know. I've even, I mean, I go through periods where I go, what am I doing in this community? I am not <laughs> a part of the maker community. I, I don't, you know, I don't really fit in and I'll drop out of groups or whatever. Cause it's just like, th this is such a completely different mindset than, than what I have or whatever. Um, so it's, it's kind of like so much similarity, but then at the same time, um, I'll go, I am not a, an artist creative person. I just, I that's, totally, that totally um, resonates with me. And, and that's what this group is all about. Um, and so I'm, I think I'll just bow out because I don't, don't really fit in. Um, and, and, and then I'll come around and I'll get interested in, you know, some aspect of it and I'll get back into it again and I'll be like, yeah, I'm not even using the right vocabulary. I have no, no training or any business being here in this creative art, you know, community. Um, so uh, yeah, there are definitely um, facets to the maker community that, uh, you know, I, I mean, we'd I be, we'd be silly to just lump word. everyone together and stereotype. Um, yeah. 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 But I, I, I totally, totally get exactly the same feeling. Um, the amount of times I, I've done the same thing of just, I mean, I mean, it's, it's imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, in, in one aspect of it, but it's the thing that gets me because of being sort of known for various things like with 3d printing or CAD or IT bits or things like that from friend connections, at least mm -hmm. having someone get in touch and ask me a question. It's like, Oh, but maybe I do still belong, you know, that, that kind of, uh, imparting knowledge or things like that I, you know I, I might not necessarily contribute you know to the to the art of it all or you know i don't do any mm. videos or anything like that but i don't think the maker community is made up of all of the same type of people and i think right. it shouldn't no. be seen that yeah way. and i yeah. think it's, it's right. the, the kind of the either side of the bell curve the of like we're not the artistic fantastic communicators doing all the videos and you know having teams of people making the stuff in the background so we can be the the, the you know the, the gorgeous voice on camera that's you know that's that is not me I, i'm right. always in the shadows always you know they're ready to answer someone's question or help someone out or you know right. i think it's it, it's those kind of people that because we're not as visible we we tend to forget we exist you know it, mm -hmm. ourselves you know as, as much as right. you know other people and then i'm i'm horribly hard on myself in general so it doesn't mm -hmm. take much of a oh did they you know what what did they mean by that or uh um you know to uh to just be like eh, i'm just gonna back away i don't you know uh because think, i'm i'm in, not alone uh, in that my self-loathing uh is is pretty boundless <laughs> um it's an infinite resource yeah 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 always available i i, I don't think you're alone in that that though i think mm -hmm. I, yeah I, I i can totally relate and like i know of others who kind of feel the same and i think sometimes we see people perhaps who are very successful in whatever what way that means but there, there is some way that is recognizably successful but they are very focused on one medium and they do that extremely well whether mm -hmm. that's art or whether that's a manufacturer of some sort whether it's you know they're making yeah you know, a, a epoxy stream tables or, or whether they're um you know making you know amazing fantastic vehicles out of whatever bits of scrap they can find or automata or, or robots or their their, mm -hmm. their programming you know, whatever it is and we can i think sometimes we can look at those and go and go i i, I don't fit into that i mean I, I, yeah. i've talked about my art i've you know, i've been i've been drawing now i think today was day 613 days mm -hmm. of continuous drawing and i i personally think that a lot of my drawings are absolutely crap 
you know, they're, they're not very good. And some days it's literally, I, I'm just doing it today because I need to do something today because I've said I'm doing something every day. Right. And it's very little effort goes into it. It's just, it's, it's done. And some days I'll, I'll be in the right mood and I'll sit down and I'll spend ages finding good source reference and I'll spend ages, you know, kind of sketching out my mm -hmm. kind of pencil line, you know, getting the shapes right and laying it out. And then I'll take particular care and I'll pick out a good pen rather than just grabbing a, a, a yeah, a, shadow foam biro from make right. central gift bag which yep. i've been doing the last few days and i'll get a nice pen out and i'll i'll take real good care about it and i produce something i kind of go oh, i like that right I really like that i've taken a bit more care a bit more time and that's that's i i think i've done something good there not brilliant but it's good and right. I, I think i'm saying it's not brilliant because i'm yeah you know, my instagram feed contains some people who are yeah, much more artistically trained have been doing art and pen and ink art, particularly because that's the one I like for much longer. They have much more talent, uh, in, I personally think, and they are producing fantastic things and they're taking more time over it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a group called Kicking the Creators and I post there every day. And yeah, I get some nice feedback now and again, but I look at some of the other people there and what they're making in a variety of different mediums, whether it's pastels, whether it's pen and ink with watercolor, whether it's you know, all sorts of things. And I, I kind of feel like you know, they're, they're all up there and I'm, I'm down here somewhere, you know, well mm -hmm. outside. But and I, a, a few times I thought, oh, I, I don't want to stay. I can't, I, can't, I can't stay in this group. But I kind of go, yeah, but I, I stay because I want to see what they make. I want to be able to ask their right. questions about what they've done. Right. And I think about like with making, and I think about, you know, I mean, take someone like Andy Durkey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's, he's an amazing guy. He's all prepared to help and talk. You ask him questions. Yeah. He's weird. He makes you think about things in different ways. He makes you look at things in different ways. And there's, that is just an amazing thing to do. And mm -hmm. then you kind of look at, you know, for example, how he produces his, um the things he makes and the mm -hmm. geometry that he's putting in place and you know the beauty just in the geometry that he's producing right. and yeah you know, kind of how am i going to produce this arc that has two different circumferences uh, along its length mm -hmm. you know, it, it's not straight here it's actually kind of curving but then it goes into a tighter curve here and then it meets to the point and how do i get those in exactly the same point and make it symmetrical and then have that rotating out and there's no cad involved it's I can say all... I can do it in the CAD. That's fine. Yeah, it's all <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. someone else's problem. Then. But even but even doing that in CAD is no mean no no mean thing. Yes, the idea of being able to reflect something and then rotate it is, makes life easier. But actually producing that particular shape in the first place, yeah, you know, may not be as simple as just getting a Bezier curve and pulling a couple of tags. Right, you know, it may require a construction. Yeah, or you sort. may or you may make something that looks very similar doing that. But because it doesn't actually have the geometry yeah. to, to the trained eye or or even subconsciously, you may go, that's not a that's not really a yeah. proper arch. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with it, but yeah, it becomes very and, uh, and I think hanging around with people like that, staying in the sort of communities. I mean I've 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 left groups and, and rejoined groups and sometimes that's nothing down to the group, it's it's down to me more than mm -hmm. Group. Oh, it's always it's um, always me. In my case, it's it's like I have a have a day where I'm like, um, hating hating myself, and and so I drop off of everything. Um, I've uh, I've left groups because it's the group as well. I mean, that, that, I mean, I've been in a few Facebook groups that specifically targeted at woodwork, mm -hmm. and yeah, sometimes there's some not very nice people, particularly on Facebook. YouTube, uh, Instagram is better. I've I think never, I've never really um, been big on Facebook. In fact, about probably the most least the most interaction I've had on Facebook of any kind was in the Fools with Tools group, which I don't think I'm a member of now, just because of one of those times where I was like, most of the people here are, you know, like like artist creative people that aren't aren't me, <laughs> aren't, aren't, aren't like me or something, you know, or and 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 that's again that's just like in my head. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't really belong here, um, and, and drop out. But I've never been real big on 
on Facebook. Um, and it's getting to the point where I'm on Instagram uh, much less now as mm. well. Just uh, posting. I, I'm on checking to see what people are doing and supporting people as much as I can. Um, but I'm posting a lot less um, so, yeah. than I was. And that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. One well, yeah. doesn't have to post lots. I think. I think. I think there's. Yeah. I got a little. I got a little social media out about myth, the privacy thing. <laughs> <laughs> when when I got this really nice curated collage of pictures of me and my daughters and family and stuff as a here's a you know here's an example collage we've put together for you of things that were on your phone that you've never posted mm. on social media that have never been actively put out there by by you into the world but here at facebook we looked through all your pictures and uh <laughs> and, and put together this nice collage with music to it um to commemorate your year and i'm like uh hmm that's interesting i i did say um you have access to my pictures so that i could upload pictures but i didn't realize i was saying feel free to peruse everything on my phone yeah, and um, while some people it, might say, "Oh, that's fantastic! Look at this wonderful thing it's done for me." Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, like, I, I, I went to the. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I'm going to block off all of this except for the one picture that I just uploaded, and then I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, yeah, I've got too much. I take two things that I don't want out there. Um, <laughs> And just in case anyone like it goes anywhere weird with that, that's you know I'm a nerd, so it's like rocket stuff or yeah. uh, or computer computer equipment or robots. That uh, yeah, most of my things are, are on my phone are like zoomed in pictures of something that I just you know it was a reference that I knew I needed serial to type number, up later. Yeah, yeah, model model number on the back of a piece of equipment. <laughs> um, you know, four wires splayed out so you can keep the colors straight. Yeah, and these, or, or and these to... days, these days at my age, the back of every small connector and everything <laughs> that I can no longer read without zooming in on my phone. I was exactly what I was just yeah. about to say is when you're trying to reach for a cable down the back of a, a screen or a machine or something like that, you take the photo yeah. of it because when you put your head to it, it hits your glasses and then you can't see properly. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I did that with our TV when I, thought, yeah, again, you kind of got to unplug something like the Amazon Fire Stick because, yeah. yeah, just unplug it, it just sort out issues you know the classic yeah for me sadly it could be it could be a connector on a workbench right in front of me and i just <laughs> uh, i can't get far enough uh, don't i should get my get glasses well, if I, uh, I, I broke them a few five... years ago and then just didn't bother getting them again so i really <laughs> should be wearing glasses i think it's just a matter of also positioning i mean years ago when i used to, uh, our last tv yeah when i was kind of sort of fitter I, I would kind of you know, get underneath and kind of tip, turn your head and then kind of put it now i just put my phone on the, the you know, uh, uh, a set of drawers <laughs> below it i just put mm -hmm. my phone on with the camera um on the front facing camera underneath it and i just right. kind of see where it is it just, kind of, yeah. Yeah, just yeah exactly yeah. um but it's better than mirror because i can zoom in right <laughs> oh yeah yeah on modern day phones the resolution is just so good that you know it's like having a pocket microscope yeah the amount of times yeah. I've, I've gone to take something apart or, you know, I know there's going to be a handful of connectors I'm unplugging or like you say, you know, with like taking a, a if you've got three HDMI ports and you're taking all three of them out to move something. I know absolutely by the time I've moved the thing, I've forgotten which order, the, you know, it's three connectors, but I'll take the photo of it because then I can I can look back on my phone to see which port was which, you know, you think I, I can still remember product keys for software I installed in, well, literally 20 years ago. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. chunks of the Windows XP product key from 2002, but you know, which order do those two cables plug in? <laughs> Not a clue. Not a clue. Yeah, I have so many. I, I laugh at myself because I don't delete them. I'll, you know, because yeah. I might need them. I might need them next week. And then I go back when my phone starts running out of memory or something and I just have picture after picture after picture of connectors and cables and things taken apart on a table in the back of yep. a machine with a <laughs> with a cover off and and you know and it's, and, and then it's kind of a puzzle to oh yeah I remember that day doing that thing or pictures of computer screens with you know IP addresses or something yep. um, you know the number of times you type 
IF config and then take a picture of it with your phone so that by the time you get back to whatever and have been asked four, four or five questions, you can then make a connection and set up to that that computer or that machine or whatever. Yeah, and like people, you know, um, they poke fun at me all the time for having multiple screens. But it, it's only because, I, you know, you, you'll have, you know, command prompt and then you'll have the firewall config on, on another screen. Mm -hmm. and it saves you having to switch between, you know, what were the last four characters on that MAC address? No, I've already forgotten by the time I've alt tabbed across. You know, if you, right. you see a list of 100 devices and you're trying to remember which which hex value it was from the back end of the mm -hmm. MAC address. Two seconds of switching and scrolling. Yeah, and if you, and if you didn't, do it, if you didn't do it a lot, you, well, yeah, and if you didn't do it a lot. I mean, if you didn't do it a lot, it would be really unique, probably. You know, those four hex digits would seem really unique. Yeah. But it, but if you do it, you know, seven times ten, a day you've got ten or seven times a week, company. then it's yeah. like, was that... Fe one six or was that what or was that yesterday that that one was the one that was yeah <laughs> start starts kind of getting jumbled. So. The other thing I find fun to use for if you if you're taking something apart, yeah, you know, mechanically you're taking something that's quite maybe yeah you know, mm -hmm. yeah you can kind of okay right like it's almost like the cables but yeah where does one go but yeah when you when you're dealing with say. Uh, I changed a, a wiper motor years ago on the car we had. Mm -hmm. uh, not a wiper motor, a, a window motor. The right. um, the window mm -hmm. stopped working, and it, mm -hmm. it, I mean it was the cable had yeah. gone around yeah. the just did just did that spun around and four or five it, it months ago. Bent, yeah. So it wasn't it wasn't in repairable um, at home. So it was a case of like okay, well, got to know where every single screw goes and which every single bolt goes, and there's a stack of them take off, and I don't want to get them in the wrong order. And, Right. Yeah. The thought of putting too long a screw in the wrong place. Yeah, because that the one at the top it was like a shorter screw at the top because it was it was nearer to the glass than at the bottom. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Okay. I don't, don't want to mix these up. Out. Yeah. Right. And break the glass that I just. Uh, <laughs> I did something silly. Um, oh gosh, it's probably been a year ago now. I, I I mean I did the same thing and I took the whole door apart, took the liner off the door, took the you know the goo off and the and the plastic you know vapor liner and everything got all the way down took apart the the door the window motor um noticed that the that the internals were kind of gummed up and the brushes were dirty cleaned it all up instead of just buying the new one which cost fourteen dollars or whatever it was yeah. <laughs> cleaned it cleaned it up and put it back together and it worked for like two months of course before it you know i mean it was on its last leg anyway it's a little tiny motor that was just worn out um but I had, you know, I'd gone through all the work of taking it apart um, and then had to do it again in the month and, and spring for the $15 or whatever it was for new motor. <laughs> but uh, we had the same with, um, a couple of years back on my old car. Uh, we noticed that the passenger side uh, window wasn't going up and down. And um, my wife had been in the car and, and we'd... Um, She'd sort of come back to look. The, the window's not going up and down, so can we have a look at it? And a mm -hmm. friend of mine's a, a mechanic, so he'd sort of had a look and he's like, "Oh, well, this, it's not power's not getting to it, and or it's getting to it, but it's not doing what it should be doing. So it, it's probably the um, the assembly in the, in the door, right? So managed to find because it was an older car anyway. Found a second hand one from a scrapper on eBay. It, just, it wasn't much, you know, twenty or thirty quid or something. But then by the time it arrived and then we took the whole door apart put the whole thing back in put it all back together you know so it was a couple of hours at the side of the you know in the street outside the house putting the rebuilding the door mm -hmm. and then we tried the thing and it still wasn't working oh what the hell's going on and then i just noticed that little window lock button on the driver's side <laughs> i i uh, did yeah i've done that my new truck the, the passenger door um <laughs> Do, the window doesn't doesn't work right now and uh and it was the same thing it was like it's not working and then i noticed the lockout button and i undid it yeah. and then it worked and i thought oh how stupid of me that was it was just this thing on the door but then it, but then a few days later it really wasn't working so i hit the button again and it and it's not working and the, so the it was like, like oh, my wife that's felt really awful weird. so but then it was... but then one of the other buttons 
you know, maybe, maybe I've got a short in the lockout button. And the door yeah. and the door is fine, you know. Maybe maybe I just the the driver's side button that locks it out um, has some. Yeah, my wife felt also issue, thinking but... that that it was her her doing that that she'd broken the window, but you know, actually, right, right. And it, it was me. I, I I'd been cleaning the car up before she'd been using it, so I'd sort of been you know been right working fine for me. Off, I'd, yeah, I just yeah. Did, like wiping all the, the stuff down, ready for her to to use the car for a couple of weeks and then it was so it was, in, it was entirely my fault right you know but she's done like feeling awful thinking it was hers and it's like oh it's yeah it's it was, it was this button uh, I'm, I'm sorry friend who just <laughs> spent half a day um you know advice and help and pulling the door apart <laughs> but now i know how the door works now i know, yeah. now i know how the mechanism works inside the door which is cool now i know that i need to check that button next time the window doesn't work <laughs> right and exactly yeah. the same happened three weeks ago. I picked up my youngest to done an exam, and I, I picked her up after the exam. And we were driving home, and she was in the passenger seat, and, and the, the window wouldn't go down. And so she started saying, the window won't go down. I said, what do you mean the window won't go down? I said, the window's not working. So I said, well, I'll try it from my side. And it wouldn't go down. I, mine worked. And I'm thinking, I said, why would that be? And he said, well, have, have a look in the, it's, it's maybe it's just a fuse has gone because my window right. still works. So yeah, maybe there's separate right. fuses for things. Dig in the, get the manual out of the, the glove box and, and see if you can find the page with the fuses mm -hmm. on. And yeah, she, I suppose, didn't really know. She, she never looked for the book of fuses before. So it wouldn't really, because right. of course, there's multiple references to fuses. And right. She's sort of trying to find this. I'm driving, of course. And I thought, well, it's, she said, well, what about the back? See if the back one's good. Because, of course, driver's side got, controls the back as well. So, right. Oh, back windows aren't going. It's so, one the driver window work, but not the others. It's like, and then we're sort of, it's 10 minutes later. And I'm kind of thinking, oh, uh, we've had so many problems with that car as well this year. Right. right. And it was just like, oh, God, not another thing wrong with the car. And it's just like, oh, I'm going to have to deal with it. I have to find the fuse box. Because I, can, I can't remember where the fuse box is, here, whether it's in glove box whether it's under the the front bonnet or whether it's in the boot because you know, every car we've had is a different place I, I i don't do the routine maintenance on things like checking fuses i'll top up fluids and chop top up tires and that's my bit maybe i'll change a bulb depending on where it is and i'll change wipers if need doing and it's like, oh crikey what what is this going to be and then it's like she's reading through and kind of fighting it Thinking, there a button to the, the lock of the thing? I said, I don't know. She said, yeah, on the on your side, she's found the, the <laughs> sort of page of things. It's, right. Yeah, it's, it's a there's a button that's labelled with a I can't remember what the button is now. And she's like, press that, press that, and then the windows work. Everything like, works. Oh, yeah. Didn't I could do that? And you, I knew I could lock the doors, but I didn't like lock the windows in our other car. What it's, it's much clearer. Sure the button, yeah. the button actually looks like it's there to sort of control right. the other windows and lock them off. It's got, you know, I can't remember what's on now, but it's like a half open yeah, window the, the with half the of Ford it dark got, and half of it Yeah, Ford we got it's clear. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Nissan. It's like no, it's just some obscure graphic. <laughs> that... I mean, given it's a shared experience between at least the three of us here, surely it's a point where. Nobody needs to use that button. So just just, just remove that from, from modern cars. <laughs> right. You know, we can communicate to our kids to say, don't open the window at the minute. You, know, you don't need to lock everyone Yeah, harder when they're toddlers. Yeah, harder when they're toddlers and they're just trying to, like, why are you taking your seatbelt off? We're doing 70 miles an hour on the motorway. Right, right, and you're crawling out the window. <laughs> Optional extra, then. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe if you... Maybe if you Maybe the driver's side, all of them always work, and if you roll it down from the driver's side, then it then it knocks out the the lock until you hit it again. Or it like flashes, it resets, you resets, resets the lock it until so you, you, hit it you again know that something. you've got it. That's what you, that's what it needs. Yeah. It needs a little LED in it just to kind of say, yeah, little <laughs> red LED to say it's locked, right? Or green one when it's open. I mean, that would just be the easy way of doing it, wouldn't it? It just comes up on the dash saying, you know, it, it detects when you've pushed to, to try and push one of the windows down, and then flashes up yeah. on the dash saying the window's locked. So, you know, some bit of feedback. Yeah, yeah, or the button flashes whenever somebody tries to roll down a window and it's locked. 
you know, yeah. so there, there are many ways to. Yeah. You are UX. A few it? more, a few platform. more iterations. There'll be, uh, <laughs> there'll be a, a remedy to that. To, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to actually sort of see. I think it, it's the sort of thing I think now, but I'll never remember. So like, yeah, whenever I'm in a different car from now on, I should check to see, you know, what the what the situation is with locking the. the Where's the horrible windows. button? Make sure no one ever pushes this. <laughs> Or you could take the approach of uh, find it and push it just so everybody has this shared experience. Yeah. <laughs> if, or go back to the days of wind up windows. <laughs> roll up no. windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of there's a there are generations now who have quite quite likely ridden in cars that didn't you know yeah. have never ridden in a never car never with a roll up it, window. Yeah. So my kids it's have because our last transition. family car had wind up in the back. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say oh, that oh, but electric in the, front. in the front. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know. I think that was quite common in the UK for, for quite a while. Yeah. On the, in the kind of the, the, um, the, the cheaper end of fancy cars. It was know, an easy solution of... until you're big enough to actually wind the handle, then you, you can't, <laughs> can't do it or reach the handle from your car seat. Yeah. Like, there were but, laws in the UK for a while that you couldn't, you couldn't see children in the front until they're of a certain height yeah there were still uh there are laws here as well and uh my my daughter in middle school dated a boy whose uh, whose mom was funny and uh, was always uh, saying funny things but he was a, he was a little guy and uh and she used to make the joke that he didn't weigh enough to ride in the front seat yet and technically <laughs> should still be in a car seat um and, and he was like in sixth or seventh grade yeah. We we used to have the issue with our, our kids sometimes when they were in the once they kind of got into car seats that were facing the front because when they were small they the car seats face the back mm -hmm. and that's just mm -hmm. sort of safer. But once they get a bit yeah. bigger and they get into ones face the front, and um, they got to a point where their legs were long enough to reach the wind up handle we had. Yeah, and so they would put their foot against the wind up handle, and. It would often then drop the window certain about just so enough it's driving along and it's, noise. you get that kind of really horrible yeah. noise you know Buffeting, yeah yeah or they would they, they would even kind of wind down they could not they didn't because they're then going against gravity they couldn't wind it back up right so the number of times we used to have to stop <laughs> and, and get out the window roll the window back up because yeah, it's pouring with rain or and i guess the next phase is then getting good enough to just unroll it little by little with your foot like you did when you rode a bicycle that was too big for you when you were a kid and you had to <laughs> like push the pedal push around fast enough with one foot that you could <laughs> hook your toe under it and pull it back up on the other side because you because you were hanging one leg off far enough to reach the reach the pedal <laughs> Again, sounds like another shared experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's certainly, you know, the older brother or sisters or some borrowed bicycle or something and the seat's so high <laughs> that you have to kind of like lean your leg off the side and, and push the pedal down and then hook your toe under it and lift it back up on the side that you can reach and just pedal with one leg. <laughs> oh, crikey. Yeah, I mean... It, it, like how people ever managed to ride penny farthings to the size of the wheel yeah and you have to keep getting yeah. a bigger and bigger front wheel as you get older <laughs> probably yeah i would have thought so it's a sort of well, Instagram today tom, tom, tom stanton was riding, was riding a penny farthing around windsor as part of the uh jubilee celebrations this weekend ah oh, you would think he'd be riding one of his uh he's made so many bicycle related contraptions yeah but uh yeah i was really and when i was young i i rode unicycles a lot I had a friend that nice. did a lot of comp you know was always learning that new thing even then mm. and unicycles were our thing for a while and then that uh kind of carried all the way through high school and into college i did a lot of unicycle riding so never tried one i wanted to but I've never tried one mm. I'm not sure my balance. I a, a bike. I don't know. A bike is different. I think it's all core, isn't it? With the unicycle. 
Yeah, but it's that kind of you because you, you've got to shift your. I mean, a bike will if you can get a bike moving, a bike will stay upright. Yeah, and then to some extent, a, a unicycle has a similar similar effect. But because you have only one point where you're where you're turning, and you can, you know, lean forward and backward, then mm. it's uh, it's a little bit different. I've only known one person, a guy that I knew in college whose balance was just so incredible. Um, he would ride around on his motorcycle around campus um, on one wheel. He, you know, he would sit in class on the back two legs of his chair, just balancing. I mean, he just was <laughs> into balancing things. Perfect. Circus and performer. he borrowed my unicycle and was riding it around in an hour. I mean, he just, mm said oh i'd like to i'd like to learn this can i borrow it an hour later he was riding around um but uh, yeah i think most people it takes a little bit a little bit longer to pick it up there's a, a festival that we go to as a family every year and they they often have it's it's, it's like a sort of really quirky festival and um i think it's the first year we were there they had a load of uh like really weird bicycles mm -hmm. and they had some unicycles there and, and some other like really just really, really odd bikes. And the one that everyone was trying to ride was, um, I, I think it was Dustin from Smarter Every Day. Did oh, yeah, yeah. Where it, reverses, where, it reverses, the steering. where it reverses. Yeah. And we we sat there, that, um, my wife and I, and my daughter, just sat there watching this guy for a good solid hour. You know, we're, you know, basking in the sun, enjoying, you know, the whole atmosphere of the festival. And this guy was steadfast on he was going to learn to ride this bike. Mm -hmm. And he was absolutely drunk as you could imagine, because it's this was like day day two on the festival. That, that might be helpful if you have to make you have to disconnect those old habits. Absolutely, yeah. So he <laughs> yeah. he was absolutely hammered, but steadfast in trying to learn to ride this bike. And I mean, you, it, it's so unbelievably difficult to to rewire your brain to try and not get those kind of. Uh, that, that muscle memory in because it, it right. goes against everything that you're trying to do right I mean, by the end of it but you know by the end of the, the hour he'd, he'd got yeah you so, probably so have to create some it. some kind of little uh mnemonic or something that 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 you know that you use well, instead of your intuition to even yeah even begin he, that process you know think of it as a sled or something where yeah, you, you push on that. Oh, I'm going to push my foot in this direction. I remember when I was taking um, flying lessons years ago, I took flying lessons for a while and I had ridden sleds, just old school, like rail sleds growing up as a kid. And you kind of push the, the runners on the sled like you would handlebars on a bicycle mm, course, and the yeah. rudder pedals in a plane are in my mind at least are kind of reversed from that. And so I was forever taxiing and, and I would push on the rudder pedal just a little bit to see which way the plane was going until I, and, and it was always the wrong way. My intuition was always wrong <laughs> until I just made this, you know, kind of made this connection of, uh, you know, st step on the side of the runway you want to go to forget about what it should feel like. Um, yeah, yeah, step on the side. That's the side of the runway you want to go to, or, you know, and so it was, it was just kind of breaking that intuition and coming up with some mnemonic to say, replace that until this becomes natural. And, you know, when you're in this machine, this is how it's normal. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's exactly it is you, if you can, if you can reframe it in such a way that it, it is a completely different thing, it is, it's, it's that disconnect to to unlearn everything you already know right it's like like you can't just consciously disconnect from the, what you already know you have to replace it yeah. with something else even if it's some silly mnemonic to and that was the thing i mean the, the guy was so tenacious in trying to learn it but but you know we ducked out before he did you know he was still trying but right. when we gave up watching um but yeah it, it was just uh it seemed to be that one that everyone wanted to conquer because it, it seemed like it was achievable. Um, but, you know, in the short space of time uh, when everyone's, you know, very drunk and very 
dehydrated at the same time in the, in the, <laughs> in the middle of a field, you know, with, with barely any sleep and thumping music going. It's it, it's not the best kind of scenario for trying to learn a new difficult skill that's that's going against everything your body fights to do. Right. Because you know, it, it, it's all very well and good starting off with that intention of, I know that left means right and right means left. But then when you start to wobble, your brain just kicks in with what yeah, you would normally you just, do on a bike. Yeah, you're just yeah. trying to save save it. Yeah, yeah, I wonder if someone who had never, yeah, if I haven't seen a video, I mean, I watch The Smarter Every Day. I think Veritasium did a video on that as well. Um, and did Veritasium did and one did, where did, it locked did it, on one side. Yeah, did, I think so. He was looking at yeah, how... you could only, yeah, you could only turn to one side. Can yeah. you balance? <laughs> um, Not that but one. if they, if you just found someone, it'd be interesting. And I don't remember them doing this find someone who's never ridden a bike and just yeah, see you know say, you know see if you can learn to ride this if they would just pick it up because they didn't have any preconceived yeah and then run them for the rest of their life on trying to ride a regular bike but well so a, a friend of mine um did that with learning a, a motorcycle and uh they bought an old like a really old bsa from the 70s where everything was backwards so they went through their motorbike test with uh with learning because they went on their own bike mm. um, and they've been riding loads on this bike where everything was was oh, wrong and reversed yeah. so, so like the clutch the and the side, clutch, clutch and brake sides were reversed and yeah I, and but even like, and uh, gear directions and, oh, and wow. everything it was it was really it was completely really reversed yeah. yeah it was like they just kind of inverted the bike um but then it made it really difficult to try and to do the test on the instructor's bike and they had to then do that all the like continue with their own bike because it was so backward and they just kind of stuck in this mentality now that's that's what they've kind of got to stick with that yeah that's interesting i got my motorcycle license because a friend um was nervous about taking the test so i had a friend in college who had bought a motorcycle from from this same friend with amazing balance um, who had built this motorcycle in their dorm room from parts. And, uh, and another friend of mine bought it from him and wanted to get his motorcycle license, but was very nervous about taking the test. And I was like, I've got absolutely nothing to lose. Give me the booklet. I'll read through it. I'll ride your motorcycle down to the Department of Motor Vehicle. I'll take the test and I'll report kind of what it was like to you if it was difficult or whatever and if i fail it i fail it i don't have a motorcycle i'd ridden motorcycles growing up dirt bikes and stuff growing up but never something mm -hmm. that you need a license for um and so i rode down and and uh and they didn't even make me take a practical test they were like well can you ride a motorcycle and i and i was like eh, i probably shouldn't have but i rode the motorcycle down here because i thought I might have to take a test on it. And they were like, well, if you wrote it down here, you're probably fine. And then I took the, you know, the written, the long written test and stuff, all of it. And they went out and, you know, just kind of in the parking lot. Um, and so I came back and I was like, oh, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't anything outside of what's in the, you know, in the pamphlet to study and everything. And they didn't even make me take a, a test. So I got the endorsement on my license and and to this day, I've never owned a street, you know, a bike that would require you to have a license. <laughs> But many years later, I let my license expire. Um, just oversight. We can get like eight-year licenses now. So you don't even, by the time it expires, you don't even think about it. Um, mm -hmm. Or back then, you you could. And uh, and so my license expired, and I had to retake my test to get my license again because my license expired. So I had to retake the test, and the person was like, oh, and we'll give you the motorcycle test as well. And I'm like, oh, I don't need to take the motorcycle test. I've I've never used it. I don't, you bikes. know, I, I, I might someday, but if I do, I'll, I'll get it, you know, cause I, you know, I've always had an interest, but I've always had a thousand more interests um, <laughs> that have outcompeted it. <laughs> and they were just insistent. They're like, but then you'll lose this endorsement on your license. And I'm like, I'm okay with it. And they're like, well, but if you don't, you're going to have to come in separate. And, and they were so insistent. Finally, I was just like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and so once again, without having a motorcycle or intention of buying a motorcycle, I took the motorcycle test again and to this day still have the endorsement on my license. So if there's ever, if there's ever a need, I'm licensed to ride a motorcycle. On the See, that, that, I, I think that's a much 
better way of doing it than ours because ours are a 10-year license and we don't have to retake a test or anything we just send the application in and it just goes online now and we just click the button and then they send us a new it's it, you update your photo and that's it mm. and it's you basically you can pass your um pass your driving test at 17 and then i think it's after after 80 after some period, have... it's like that here again. It's every year. After a certain age, it's every year. Or maybe after a certain yeah. age, it's every couple of years. And then after another certain age, it's every year you have to go. My friend that I've edited patents for forever just turned um, 80. And he mm. was grumbling that now he has to go get his license every year, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, 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 just, just because he turned 80. Um, so that was... I just I just realized I've been a little distracted looking over here because I just kind of remembered that this is also on YouTube and that there might be somebody out there. And so <laughs> I, 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 you know, I've been watching Andy glance over the whole time and and I was just looking at the, the private chat here on Yard Street on StreamYard and uh, thinking yeah, oh, it's nobody's commenting. stream as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's dangerous <laughs> if you click on the comments one, you'll you'll see the, the, the stream of people. <laughs> Yeah. So, so hi everyone. That's maybe yes. been out there for for a portion of this. Um, I, I I know you're out there now. <laughs> the people are real. Yeah. So so bye, Steve. Um, yeah. Yeah. Steve's gone. Uh, yeah. yeah. Just yeah, in, just in time to see Steve leave. <laughs> yeah, he's gone on about how he's not an artist again. Oh, and I've missed all of it. I could have been interacting with. Uh, I love you guys. I think I think he professes too much. I think that's the, the, that's oh, definitely. the uh, uh, John and the, Steve earlier in the chat. John and Steve did say you are always welcome back in Fools of Tools anytime. Oh yeah, oh, I, I, I I and I always figured I was. It wasn't. It, yeah, it wasn't like I was I was kicked out or, or shunned. It was all in my own head as always. Yeah. Um, I think it was the it was the encouragement to say, "Come on back, we miss you." Yeah. <laughs> Come back in and join the the. Uh... Oh, what, what, a, what an amazing group! Well, I mean, that's so that's such a it's the, it's the new uh, such a tight challenge. group yeah. of folks. What's that? Yeah, it's uh, the the latest challenge for for the fools was to make a small boat. Oh well, to make <sighs> any boat. Hey, boats. Well, maybe it's maybe it's more fun to yeah. not be in because I just saw. Um, I think it might have been yours, Jamie. It was your, it was yours a fork in the or a spoon? It was a, a little spoon. Mermaid. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I was like, what an odd, what an odd thing. <laughs> so, so maybe by not being in, I, I, I can just be surprised by weird things that people all seem to be doing. I didn't realize this whole boat making thing had caught on. Yeah. It's a strange yeah. trend at the minute. <laughs> it's, all, it's all Steve's fault. We Maybe can say that. Things. Yeah. yeah. He's gone now, particularly. He can't defend himself. Yeah. So it's perfect time to definitely blame himself. him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. crikey. Well, it's, as I've been showing off the uh, thing, is that a good time for us to uh, talk about what's been grabbing our attention then? It probably is. We are getting to that time of the uh, evening for us. Yeah, approaching, uh, it's getting closer to midnight here. Um, yeah, so at some attention grabbers, those things that have been grabbing our attention lately, whether they might be mm -hmm. in any form, whether it's video, uh, things we're doing, things we've done, things we're about to do, things we've read, watched, listened to, all sorts of things, really. It doesn't That's really matter. Whatever it is. Um, so we normally go guests first. So if you've got something lined up, if you haven't, then you know, Jamie and I will go well, sort of jump in. Yeah, lately I've been, and this is always... Um, and, and I always feel like this is the sort of thing that you say in, in our crowd and they're just like, yeah, that's how it is for everybody, but might be different for, for other people. But there's always just this circling back around to, to skills that I pick up a little bit of. Mm -hmm. um, and then half a year later or two years later, I come back and I dig a little bit deeper and then I move on to something else, um, you know, kind of uh, that distraction. 
And then I come back around to it and I dig a little bit deeper and I come back around to it and I dig a little bit deeper. And so there's a list of, you know, a thousand things in a, in a circle that I come back to and, and dig a little deeper each time. And so lately it's been amateur radio and, uh, and oddly getting back into um, kind of com computing and networking and stuff as a, as something that I've been doing at work um, that if that's kind of reignited my, you know, wanting to set up networks at, at mm -hmm. the shop and, and, and maybe do something broader. I've been doing some websites for uh, some people and stuff. And so that's kind of got me back into that, into that mode. And every once in a while I have this fascination with, uh, I wonder if we could just like create our own makers, like, like huge makers network you know like, like a big intro have yeah, like, have like yeah like have aws servers that are just like our own social media and our own stuff that we just you know have our own you know maker web um yeah and and then i think well that would be a lot of work and coordination of a, of a lot of people but it would still be fun to just be like yeah, oh yeah we don't we don't depend on anybody else and we set our own standards for what you know what we can share and and you know what what gets picked up and it's usually during times like when I'm thinking about privacy issues and stuff that uh, I start I start thinking about those things. It's like, oh, I just that'd be cool if you just had like your own network that was just friends, you know, just people that you knew. Um, of course, it would be like any other group on uh, on social media or whatever. It would <laughs> it would either be really small or it would grow to the point where it wouldn't just be friends anymore. Uh, I, th yeah, I think things like that are possible. I mean, I, I can't remember what it's called. There's, I heard an advert the other day for a, essentially a social media. Uh, I don't think it's particularly new, but I don't think it's particularly old either. It's basically something that you can basically just have your own network, your own social media network. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't remember. Yeah, was, and there's certainly. I think it was an interview that... on a podcast. It was an interview on a podcast. And I can't remember the name of the. the um, particular app that was for right but i mean i think i i mean i i particularly like discord as a as a place to mm -hmm. kind of hang out um i'm jimmy and i are both in discord a number of discord servers okay, yeah. uh with mods in in at least one I'm each a, yeah i'm in a, um, in a few um and it's that i don't spin satellite i'm in a satellite amateur radio satellite discord that um, it's probably the one that I'm in and out of every once in a while. I, I find them, I think there are advantages to Discord over something like Facebook. I mean, you, you, you lose, you don't get that kind of you know, sudden influx of adverts or mm -hmm. uh, things like that. It's, it's an element of you can control who's in, and it's, it's, there's also an element of yeah, you can actually sort of control who gets out. Um, <laughs> And if they're not a good fit, you can kind of go, you're not a good fit, bye-bye, for whatever reason. Um, not of that's impossible with Facebook, but I think I think with Facebook particularly, there's that feeling of you've always got kind of, you know, Zuckerberg and his his, his teams kind of having an oversight and kind of, what are, what, what are they dealing Curating with? Curating your let's, algorithm. Let's see what, yeah, let's see what you, well, we think you should now see this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like yeah, funny, funny stuff in the Fools of Tools group. Sometimes it's like I know I saw something, but for whatever reason, I didn't interact with it. Can't, and can't find it anymore. I can't find it again now. Yeah, and you have to kind of go. Yeah, the, yeah, the worst with the Fools of Tools group is for whatever reason, I always seem to just not be paying attention or dropped out, you know, or just didn't didn't check in um, during the time that they're like coordinating the treasure trade or whatever. And then I drop back in and I'd be like, oh, I missed it again. Uh, <laughs> And so, but I, but I enjoyed it the year that I, I participated. That was a lot of fun. Well, while John's still in the chat, we'll just have to get him to make a note that next year we'll give you a, a direct message. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> yeah. No, I'll, I'll, put I'll, I'll, list I'll, I'll, I'll come back. I'll probably come back around. Um, um, cause I, cause I do miss it. And I interact with all the same people on Instagram when I can. <laughs> and anyway, I mean, and, and it's like, yeah. And then sometimes you'll just be like, I haven't heard anything from that person in so long. Um, and you go check their Instagram and they've been posting every day and you just, that's the other thing about Instagram or Facebook. It's like, yeah. why did this person get hidden from me? I, I used to talk to this person a lot. I, I always, you know, I never see a post of theirs that I don't comment or like or whatever. Mm -hmm. Why, 
why is it that now I'm seeing this stuff that I don't care anything about and I've never interacted with at, at the expense of people that I want to interact with? I was thinking about that this week on, on with regard to Instagram. Uh, I was listening to uh, Lee the Rainbow Carver on Katie Freeman's um, podcast, mm -hmm. which is now called Craft in the Revolution. Um, used to be what it used to be called because you've been uh, on it and it was yeah. a different name then didn't it i think uh mm -hmm. well she had two yeah um, she had the wonder woman one yeah um i can't remember but I, I was listening to sort of uh lee's story and i and to be honest i've i, I actually stopped it part way through and I'm, I, i'll go back to it because it's it's a story that's really worth listening to um and but it's 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 kind of heartbreaking as well and i, I, was, I was thinking i i used to interact with lee a lot uh in, certainly in my early days in in of instagram and we had a number of good conversations and and i was thinking i'm i'm, I'm going to reach out and i'm going to finish listening to this and i'm mm -hmm. going to reach out because I, I just want to kind of sort of stay i've i've, I've heard you um and then i was thinking I haven't interacted on on Instagram with Lee for I don't know when I can't remember right. the last time I saw a post from them. And I'm thinking that's that's not great. I, I to a certain extent I'm thinking I mean I've 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 got a couple of thousand need two and a half thousand followers. I I follow probably about mm -hmm. seventeen eighteen hundred people, and I I used to I mean. A few years ago, I, I literally, yeah, every day I would, I would go, I get to that message that says, "You've seen everything for the last three days. We have nothing new to show you." But now, with the, the way the algorithm works, and there's so many, and I'm, I'm trying to do other stuff and not In spending all my time on Instagram, mm -hmm. I'm not seeing anywhere near as much. And I'm kind of, I, I was thinking just earlier today, thinking, do I need to actually go through Instagram and cull, yeah, a thousand people off my Instagram mm -hmm. feed? So that I can actually interact with not just people that are kind of acquaintances, maybe look at their work, but so I only have right people that I regard as, as as friends, people who I've kind of had conversations with, or people whose work inspires me so much. And I may not interact with them; they, they may be mm. so big that they don't kind of interact with people. That right, but them. you want to see their work. But I want to yeah. see their work because it's so amazing. I mean, I follow a few mm -hmm. artists. Uh, particularly one line and, and pen and ink artists and their work is just so inspiring far beyond it's not that i'm not capable of it but it's not something i can do now right. and if i want yeah. to do something like they're doing i need to spend you know probably an hour right. or two every no, day it's good to have that something that that pulls you forward i mean i yeah. follow a lot of people just because it's like wow this is this is something i would, would like to be able to do someday or aspire to but I also know that there are people that I have followed and it's pro it's probably in the hundreds because it's kind of almost that kind of uh, follow for follow, not follow for out follow, of the yeah. just, just purely to build numbers. But, you know, you kind of, when you get like in a, a Facebook group, for example, people go, yeah, oh, post your Instagrams and let's see, yeah, let's see what you're doing. And mm. quite often I kind of go through and go, okay, well, you yeah, know, you look like you're making some nice stuff. I'll give you a follow because mm -hmm. it's a nice polite thing to do. And I think I've actually reached a point now where I've, I need to actually rethink, and um, maybe that means that some people lose my, uh, not subscription, but they lose my follow. Right. But I need to maybe spend more quality time with people like Lee, who I've had mm -hmm. some good interactions with, who does amazing things, but is also a very interesting person, and has been a very supportive person. But I'm not able to do that. I, I I can't remember mm -hmm. the last time I interacted with Lee or even saw. No, I have seen some of the because they've been uh, out in the states, and I think actually I think it may be because Lindsay posted a story because I think they visited Lindsay. Mm -hmm. So maybe it was on Lindsay's story that I saw. I don't know, but I yeah, need to change. And that. I think I think when you like now I've been busy with work and I've fallen into not, not checking every day or not going as deep into the feed. And then I think the algorithm 
um, starts, you know, kind of grasping at straws. It starts throwing out stuff. Well, maybe, maybe you'd, we could keep you on longer if you saw this. Yeah. Just and so I think the, the yeah. less you interact, the more dilute and the more off topic it gets yeah. as the algorithm starts to go, I don't know. She's, she's not on every day, uh, you know, three mm -hmm. times a day anymore. So let's throw all of this weird stuff at you. And, and then a real, uh, you know, there's a real with a catchy, you know, something. And you're like, what is that? And you click on it. And the next thing you know, it's like, okay, now I'm getting all of these weird meme reels <laughs> of that because I was curious enough to click on one. And so now it's like, I'm trying to look at it in the little tiny window of three or four of them without clicking on it. Cause I'm, I, you know, when you get those three, the three second <laughs> preview that then, yeah, maybe, maybe it's that, maybe it's that same thing with uh, taking pictures of things with my phone. Uh, <laughs> you know, maybe I take a picture of it with my phone and I blow it up and go, ah, I never want to see that again. <laughs> and, and, and now I've got a subscription to it, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. I, I got annoyed with that earlier. I, I, I was, I think I was just waiting for somebody else here and i was kind of like right i just kind of opened up instagram just looking. And i got to that i was scrolling up and you got to that point there were three mm -hmm. three or four kind of uh reels there and the one in the middle caught my eye right and i can't remember i can't remember what it is now mm -hmm. but i thought like i'm just gonna i'll just i i kind of uh just went to the home screen on my phone so i've saved that position now i'll go back to that later and have a look because <laughs> i needed to go off and do whatever it was Right. And then later, I kind of yeah, I think, went to Instagram. That page came up, and then instantly refreshed and went to the top yep. of the page. So and the then when I scrolled down, it was a completely different set of reels. It was like, yeah, oh, and then you wanted never... to, oh. yeah, or, or yeah, you, you want to show it. somebody uh, something yeah. that you saw on a reel, and yeah, they've got you. Because was... you either have to share it with yeah. them, or you go, yeah. you'll never find it again. Yeah, because I have no idea who that reel was from. It's not something. It's just mm -hmm. something that caught my attention. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it, because the way they, they feed reels to you, it may not have been something that was made today. It could have been six months old. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's just, oh. You'll well, just have yeah. to try and complete Instagram again, Andy. Yeah, just have to kind of go through the reels. <laughs> you have to, go, you through have to look reels, through all just, of Instagram. Yeah. I read all of Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't even realize it, that you could get to the bottom. I don't, I don't think yeah. I've ever got to the bottom three days, of three days worth of the yeah. people that I follow. Uh, yeah. Yeah, three days worth. If it'll, it'll it'll scroll through if you just keep going, um, but it doesn't. Here's the other problem with it now. The way you've got any fingerprints is, left, though, Andy, from the amount of swiping up the screen, is it just? I use my nose. Like a gap. Um, <laughs> the um, well, I, I did an interesting. I, I may have talked about this last week. I did a little exercise a few weeks ago. I thought what I'm going to do is through the day, every hour or so, I'm going to and I go on Instagram. I'm going to just feed through and go back kind of a few hours and I'll do it on the following rather than the kind of general feed. So I'd go back like three hours and then an hour later, I'd go back and kind of do three hours again. But what was interesting is that every time, every hour, it would be not just new stuff appearing that was an hour old. There would be stuff that would maybe be three hours old. So I should mm. have should have already seen it in the yeah. previous hours little scan so you don't get to see now now i have see. uh i have got the message pop up that says you should maybe go to bed or <laughs> you've you've been on too long not in a long time but uh um back before i i was working uh, for somebody else full time and i could just you know sit down and scroll for a couple hours or whatever or i would just scroll um, not have any particular time that I had to, to get up or be at work or anything. Um, when, when the message popped up and was like, you've, you've been looking at Instagram for two hours <laughs> or whatever it was, uh, you should probably uh, take a break. Yeah. I haven't had that one for a while either. Yeah. Which is a good thing. I think. Maybe, then, maybe, yeah. you're, maybe you're not getting it because it's like, well, I think he's immune now. I think he can handle scroll. He's he's built up his <laughs> uh, he's built up his finger. He, he's okay. <laughs> we we don't have to warn him not to run a marathon now. He's been running them for a long time. So, yeah, I think it's it's when you kind of think right. I'll just I'll just I'll uh, make a cup of tea, 
And while I'm waiting for it to brew, I'll just sit down and browse through. Oh, I'll, I'll go on some reels. Let that reel caught my eye. I'll go and then you kind of go back and find your tea's gone cold because you've been on the reels for far too long I, scrolling to try and find yeah. something good. Oh, yeah. Horrible about that. I made, a, I made a device that went inside our microwave years ago before microwaves had any kind of reminder. Um, I made a, a, a device that sat um, it was, it was inside the microwave, but it was looking through a little grid of holes where the light was in the microwave. So it wasn't being hit by the microwaves. Um, and it just sat there and watched for the light to, to go out. So when you open the door, the light comes on. When you start the microwave, the light comes on, you know, you close the door, light goes off, you start it, the light goes on. Um, and then when it finishes, the light goes off. Um, and so my device just was like a little state machine and it would just watch for the light to the light to go on. Um, and then if the light didn't come back on within a minute, it would start beeping because I was forever putting uh, tea in the microwave or putting water in the microwave to make tea. And then coming back, you know, in the two minutes I had set the microwave for, I wandered off and started doing something else. And then I would come back and it would be so cold, I'd have to do it again. And in that two minutes, I'd be like, oh, I'll just go out and see if that glue's dry and, and forget it again. And so I made this, this little device that uh, um, mon monitored the light. And if the light had been on for more than 30 seconds and then went off and didn't come back on in the next 30 seconds um, because I had opened the door, then it just start beeping at me. So Genius. I've taken I've taken put in the kitchen timer on. Uh, I mean, our kitchen is literally mm -hmm. six feet that way. So I've taken to because I like my tea to brew. So I've I've taken to putting the kitchen timer on to for six minutes because I've I've worked out that's the kind of optimum right. sort of time for just the right sort of level of brew. Mm -hmm. And so I put that on, and then I can come on if, if I'm just working on. You know, the computer or i mean here that that's absolutely fine and it'll beep and it'll tell me but sometimes i'll forget to set it and then you know, it's like go back half an hour later or half an hour's all right actually but if it's like an hour later it's gone cold right it's cold and you've got to or start if, again if i've made the mistake of going elsewhere then i, I don't hear the beep mm -hmm. you know, if i've gone to the, if i've gone to the bathroom or you know gone into the garden or something and you're doing something else and then again just get distracted by it right that's it. Yeah, it's gone done for. Yep, it's phone timer for me for that. <laughs> yeah, gotta be done. Jamie, have you been doing anything else other than uh, making boats? Uh, yeah, I've been I've been up in my loft because we're getting the, the loft boarded out. Um, so we've had the electrical work done. So I thought backing up on the on the the networking stuff. I'm um, been popping holes in various ceilings and getting some uh, some conduit in place ready for dropping a load of network cable i'm sort of planning on once the boarding's all done um sticking a network cabinet up there and feeding the house properly rather than trying to run it rather stairs. rather than something that's just this mess of stuff back behind well I, i'm currently <laughs> i've got a i've got an application server that's running the router and a handful of other things and then i've mm -hmm. got some other bits and bobs and some other bits and bobs there and then i've got cables running up from the router downstairs running up here to then feed the internet out back around and i thought if i if i just drop some conduit down through the couple of floors and then some through into here and i can at right. least then centralize it and put all the noisy networking kit up there and that's my that's my plan so yeah, that was, that was yesterday, just crawling around in the loft for a little bit. But yeah, otherwise just making the little little caracal has been a, a nice, fun little challenge because I haven't I haven't really done much in the way of making recently. So it was um Yeah, I, I need to. I mean for my for my mental well being, I need to have something that I'm doing here at the shop that yeah. it, even if it's very similar, um just makes me leave work at uh, you know seven foot eight whatever i mean I, I really enjoy what i do so i just like hang at at work um working on stuff far too late and i should get in the habit of just being like well you know i'm i'm salaried i'm not my pay is just going down the longer i the longer i wait um yeah. and i should i should leave after uh you know nine hours ten hours whatever and mm. and 
have work something, something drawing me back to the shop to, to work on. Um, yep. that's, that's different and be like, it'll, you know, it's fun, but I should have, should have something else back at the, that I'm doing just for me. Uh, and that's exactly what this was. Um, cause I, I was, my original plan was to do a 3d printed frame. And then so I, I've already had the, um, like one mil, less than one mil thick, uh, pig leather. So mm -hmm. I had that lying around. So when Steve issued the challenge, I was like, I'm, I'm going to make a coracle, um, you know, use a, a teaspoon as the, as the propulsion for it. And that will do. So it was that default kind of thing of, uh, you know, I'll do a 3d printed frame and then wrap that in the leather. And, and then the other day I thought, no, I'm going to just, I'm going to make a, get some thick copper wire, solder it mm -hmm. all together, and make the frame that way. It's something different. It's something a bit, back to doing something with my hands and I, I really really enjoy doing it so it's that kind of like you say it's, it's realizing that it's been so long since i've actually done it you know I, i've noticed uh, an effect on my mental health so it's um it's been good to be back doing something weird yeah. and fun and creative so that's been me how about you andy a uh, bit, bit of a quiet week of, well, i suppose in some ways uh still as i sort of mentioned we're still in kind of exam season uh so kind of lots of helping with exam prep uh but in 10 days time the last exam that i have any kind of responsibility for helping with finishes and uh, homeschool for us finishes as a family I, in, in a way mm. it never really ends but kind of yeah our homeschool hmm. journey kind of comes to an end this year. Is it that seems kind of late, late in the year? Is that typical? Uh, UK, it's it's the, it's it, the uh, yeah. I, was, I was talking with this uh, last night with some uh, yes, or yesterday afternoon with some guys on the uh, makes on Zoom having coffee, uh, mm -hmm. talking about kind of how the school year is different in the UK to the US. Right. So because uh, that uh, one was saying his uh, daughter had finished school um, for the summer. And yeah, I'll, we've got another seven weeks before right. term finishes. Yeah, here yeah, most of our schools are already schools. out. The exam groups will finish earlier. So, um, my eldest, there's two kind of exam group years. So, the age 16 and age 18, and my two fit into that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, by the end of this month, both of them will have finished their exams, one forever. At, Right. the university or whatever um and one's got you know break until september and then goes off well this she's got an induction week at uh sixth form school uh so that will be which is kind of 16 to 18. so apart from that it's till september um but it's yeah it's for us it's it's perfectly normal this time of year for the, the kind of mm, right relations. Okay. uh end of yeah may and may and june uh, the season for that uh, the results come out in uh, August so that will be yeah as, as as Donna in the chat said Scotland has a slightly different pattern so their their exams are earlier and they they start back uh, after their summer holidays earlier so in England and Wales it tends to be first of September or the kind of a date if it's, yeah, first, of September, right. first week of September yeah. yeah first week of September um Scotland it's August but they they end of the school year is in the end of June so England and Wales tend to do kind of halfway through July mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of a bit of difference so that's been kind of although we've had a week's holiday it's been the Whitson holiday this week um so the exam prep has to continue. So it's been a lot of that. Um, been watching a bit. I've been carrying on watching a bit more TV. I've, I've, I've been watching, trying to watch more TV than YouTube, which at mm. the moment has been too difficult because there's, there's not been a huge, I mean, there's, there's a huge amount of stuff, but not a huge amount of stuff been grabbing my attention on YouTube lately. Um, mm. it, it's, it's probably you know, less than 10 a day, the last sort of couple of weeks uh for me that i've been kind of watching right. on youtube but i've been I've, i started watching this week i started watching the x-files from the start um 
which is which is quite yeah have you seen it before i yeah i mean i watched it as i watched mm. it as yeah i mean it came out in mm. 90, 90, 92, 93, something yeah, like that. Yeah, early 90s, yeah. So I was watching it. I, I, watched, I didn't watch all of them. There was, there was still a gap. Uh, but I certainly watched the early ones. And so the ones I've seen this week, the ones, certainly one of them, or two of them, that I definitely, that I watched yesterday. Right. Uh, definitely remembered. But I'm, I'm watching it from the start, just kind of in a new set of eyes. And just like, I did miss a chunk. I'm going to try and work through uh, all of them, hopefully. Uh, I've been watching a few films as well, kind of, but the films I've been watching at the moment, it's kind of like it's just on the background while I'm doing something else, mm. yeah, usually on the laptop. But I've got a, I've made a little list of films that I want to watch that maybe I need to sit down and probably have to do in kind of sort of split sessions. Um, right. And there's a few I want to rewatch. You know, it's like Terminator. I've, I've seen Terminator, the first one, quite a few times. Terminator 2, I've seen a few times. But I can't, I think I've seen Terminator 3. But I haven't seen like Terminator Genesis or some of the other ones. Alien, yeah, I've, I've seen the Alien and Aliens several times. Right. But then I've only seen the Three third one once. So I haven't seen the last, the, the most recent ones. So, yeah, yeah, I've been seeing the ads for the Jurassic Park movie and was thinking, no, no I, I'm not sure I ever saw the, the last one of those before this yeah. one. I saw the I first one. I've never seen, seen Jurassic Park one. two. Never mind any yeah, of the others. Yeah. <laughs> so I, was, I get so far behind on that because I don't. I don't really do TV, um, or movies very much. And then every once in a while, something will rise to the level of of like a series or something that a lot of people are talking about, or it's or it's mm. got some local tie or something. Um, and that's how it was with Breaking Bad. Um, and it was of like, course, yeah. Well, it's such a big Never thing and everybody's that. talking about it and it's uh um and it's local. Uh, and uh <laughs> and so I watched it and then of course I just watched the entire series up to the point where I caught up with it airing. Mm -hmm. And then I was hooked and watched the end. Someone was just talking about uh um Better Call Saul and they mm -hmm. were like, Oh, you're not watching it? I can't believe you're not watching it and so then it'll take something, you know, somebody local say, oh, I was an extra on this episode or whatever. And, and so I'll go, go watch. And, and then if I watch a couple, I'll get hooked. And so, but the only thing I've watched lately is making fun, of course. Um, and I, and of course I sat down and watched all the episodes in like two sittings. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I only watched them a uh, week before last, I think. A couple yeah. Weeks I had a, I, I was, yeah, I was, I had a, Bad head cold and I was under the weather. It's just like, what am I going to watch? And I thought, well, I'll put that on and sort of watch it and see whether, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it was, yeah, it was better than I expected, to be honest. It's entertainment, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I asked a lot of people after I watched it, I, I started asking everybody I knew that had kids, um, you know, if they watched it and, and, you know, say, and see, you know, tell them about it and see if they'd go watch it. Cause I was curious and uh, 201 um, among the people I watched, they were like, Oh, my kids, my kids want to be on it. They want to be the one telling them what to do. <laughs> and so I think that it did really well with the target audience. That's good. Yeah. I think, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I was, I mean, I still need to catch up with There's a few Marvel series and some of the style, God, yeah. star, which what's the one with uh, Star Wars, isn't it? With them. Um, that's, that's my memory not working. <laughs> There's a few Star Wars ones on uh, Disney Plus that I want to kind of watch at some point as well. Um, it's like I've only seen the first episode of Mandalorian, so I've still got all that Mandalorian good. plus the Boba Fett and never mind Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah, and of yeah, I course the, follow the, the boys one of the guys' well. legacy effects. Um, yeah. I met him. They were in town when they were filming. Um, Oh, what was it? Uh, the Tom Hanks movie. Was it uh, Finch? I think where he's uh, like in the desert and he's got, or he's, you know, kind of like a last man on earth sort of thing. And he's building a robot to take care of his dog and stuff. And mm -hmm. one of the guys from Legacy Effects came by and used some stuff at my shop. Um, Ooh. And, uh, and so I've kind of through, through Instagram, I, I see some of the behind the scenes stuff he's done for the Mandalorian 
Um, and, and, and I, and I rarely want to watch shows because I'm so into the, you know, to the sci-fi story of it, even though if I watched it, I would get into it. It's like, Oh, I want to see his work, you know, or I want to, yeah. you know, on his, I want to see the results of what this maker or that maker did. The, the Mandalorian's a really interesting one actually, because it's, um, it's, it's, it's less of a sci-fi show and more of a Western. Yeah, mm -hmm. I heard that, and it, it's it's uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. I'm looking forward to the next season. But yeah, I haven't I haven't watched Boba Fett either um, or Kenobi. Um, yeah, I've got a lot. Of catch, I've got a lot of catching up on things like that. There's, there's, yeah, um, I do want. I I mean, I, a couple of years ago, I did start watching Next Generation. Uh, again, Star Star Trek. Trek, but rather than yeah, Wars. rather than Wars. Yeah, yeah I had to. Think about it's that. star stuff totally wrong exactly um and i kind of started watching it but then i kind of i stopped for some reason i think it was i don't know whether it just didn't grab my attention or whether just other things grabbed my attention mm. but I'm, I'm i'm trying to make a more concerted effort of a couple of times a week to stick the tv on and watch something there rather than just not aimlessly but rather than just sort of browsing the internet all the time um, mm -hmm. But I, there are some films that I've, because I've made a little list of films that are on Disney Plus that I want to watch. But there are a few that I kind of I want to watch rather than I want to have it on while I'm doing something yeah, else. Right. Because I can't. I can't. I can't do that. I mean, my my brother-in-law and sister's TV's just on all the time. I mean, if they're awake, their TV's on, mm. and I'll go over there to eat dinner or something, and we'll be at the com at the table, and. I'll totally drift away from the conversation because I'm watching whatever's on TV. Because yeah. I'm so if a TV's on, I'm I'm actively watching what's on TV. I've never been someone who could just have like a TV yeah. on in the background. And I'll do the same thing with YouTube. I'll I'll be like, oh, this is a long, interesting video. I'll just turn it on and I'll I'll work on this other stuff. And then I'm just sitting there in front of the screen watching, you know, yep. studying I'm whatever's safe. going on because <laughs> it's usually some learning, you know, educational thing that I can't just have on in the background. So I'm not not very good at, at having a screen I, on and just, and just just be a, kind of yeah. paying attention. If there's a conversation happens, so if if it's all of us kind of and the TV's on, and maybe there's a conversation starts between yeah my wife and and one of the kids, I I, I I'm done for. I I can't listen to the conversation or mm -hmm. watch the TV. If I try and watch the TV, the conversation spoils it. If I try and listen to the conversation, the TV spoils it. And yep. I kind of the number of times I have to then kind of right, I, I'm just gonna put my earbuds in and listen to a podcast and right do even else. podcasts. I mean, I you know, if I'm making doing something that starts making noise in the shop, then I'll find myself just just stopped just listening to the podcast. Music is fine, <laughs> but if I'm listening to a podcast, I guess I should get earbuds. Um, because I'll put it on the speakers in the shop and then if I you know, and I'll keep from doing something that's going to make a lot of noise so I don't miss a part of the podcast. And then before I know it, I'm not getting any work done. I'm just listening to the podcast and doing something really, you know, quiet than in my work. That must be yeah, a nightmare to, be... to try and get any work done if you're listening to us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How no, long the episodes are. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I will. I'll turn on the episode and uh, I, I'll come home from work or whatever. And I stay up really late. And so I'll turn on the episode and two hours, two and a half hours later, I i stop watching it and i go to bed but yeah it's 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 I, it's horrible i don't want to miss anything it's, it's like media is is study for me so i don't want to i don't want to miss yeah. anything yeah. it's never been never done a lot of reading of just entertainment reading or entertainment viewing it's always kind of like learning something and so yeah. it, i so i always absorb i always take in my media and in kind of information absorbing mode I think it's an element of for me it depends on what the what the form of the media is and what I'm trying to do. So yeah, I want to just pottering around and doing stuff around the house, walking the dog, doing the kind mm -hmm. of dishes, cooking, listening to a podcast, absolutely no problem at all. If I want to sit down and say create something, so for example, if I'm doing like the pictures for Maker's Waffle, but yeah, I, mm -hmm. I use Canva and I, I take pictures again, having the podcast on or having a YouTube video on. Uh, on another screen, if I do it on the other computer, no, no problem at all, because mm -hmm. the generation, the skill of generating those 
pictures mm -hmm. is, is relatively low. It doesn't require right. a huge amount of concentration. But if I'm trying to maybe create something in detail, if I'm trying to write something, if I'm trying to generate new thoughts from collated thoughts from other sources, I cannot have anything that has a uh, spoken or sung word. I can't have songs that I might, if I start singing them, I, yeah, I will literally start writing down lyrics. Um, I've, I've, so I have to, I oh, have to, yeah, I have to have uh, music only. So whether that's classical music or whether that's uh, game type music, which is quite good because it's designed to get people, you know, a, a, right. a thinking zone. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but I can't, I can't have the TV on. I can't, it has to be just music. And it, I, I struggle if it's silence as well. I need, sometimes silence is fine, but if there's, if it is silence, mm -hmm. there are things happening. If there are people outside, somebody working on a car or a, a delivery of some groceries uh, or something like that, then right. I, that will break my concentration so easily. But picking the right music, um, you know, with this, uh, I particularly like Baroque, uh, some Baroque classical music, or whether it's something yeah, modern classical like an Audi, um, mm -hmm. then that will, yeah, that that's fine. And I can concentrate. Oh, I can that's interesting. Better. Yeah. But, yeah. It's just the way my brain works. Yeah, music of any kind, even music with lyrics, or you know, is is fine as background. As I've that's always been good background for me to mm -hmm. for me to work against. But if, if, I'm, if I'm somebody workshop, somebody yeah. talking, having a conversation, then yeah, I think like, if I'm doing something in the, the tinkerage, I mean, I have I have an old CD player out there and uh, a couple of speakers, um, and, and literally it's kind of yeah, it's a couple of old pc speakers with built-in amp and just plugged mm -hmm. into the headphone socket yeah most of the cds i have out there are ones that i have listened to hundreds of times yeah so they're they're kind of well established in my head yeah most of them are from you know the 80s some of them are older uh and if they're i can work in even if i'm doing something like trying to fix something electronics which requires a little bit more focus if i'm making something with wood doesn't matter i'm fine with that but if i'm trying to actually sort of generate thoughts if i'm trying to come up with or if i'm trying to concentrate like on my drawing if i'm trying to do my drawings i can't listen to a podcast while i'm drawing uh, i think because it's just the amount of mental cr creative mental effort involved mm. i can't have that distraction of other things Mm. Yeah, so I, I know my, my wife's got to a point of um, because my wife and daughter are very much that kind of uh, background noise on is their mm -hmm. kind of default. Um, whereas for me, if it's something I want to watch, it's something I'm actively wanting to watch and listen to. So, quite often, if it's something I, that I know I want to enjoy, I'm, I'll end up watching it myself, like sort of off on my own, either up here in the office or you know, after they've gone to bed or something. Um, just for that like focus on what's going on. Whereas they they you know, my wife sort of says that she'll generally watch something in two or three sittings. She's she doesn't like to sit still and watch something. She'd rather be up and doing something or making something or mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So she's she's you know pottering around, which then is distracting me because she's walking around in front of the TV and stuff. Um but quite often there'll be just something on and if she's having a conversation with me if it's, if it's something that you know i need to like really actively pay attention with or you know i need to participate in rather than just something that's you know like an a, a sort of, uh, information dump about current affairs or whatever you know if it's something specific that i need to you know pay attention to um she knows that you know like she'll switch off the tv or, or mute the sound or you know something so that there isn't that kind of like auditory distraction or you know that kind of uh an, another voice at the same time that will make me glaze over or you know that kind yeah. of thing <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i get that i could plan to start that one yeah but then you get something that's the for, for me if i get focused on something then i'll just it's like the, the other one that grabbed my attention is like as i said last night i was, I was 
this uh, 53 minute long um, YouTube video, which I watched at one time speed of a guy solving a Sudoku, which only started <laughs> with one number. And it's just like, I hadn't seen that channel before. It, it just something mm. came up. It's not, I've not been looking at Sudoku, so I've been looking at other sort of puzzle things, but I, I love puzzles. And it's just like, I want to listen to this. I want to watch this. It was just like you could. I could have had. I mean, there was there's a thunderstorm. But yeah, I could have. I could, there could have been a nuclear bomb going off outside, and I probably wouldn't have noticed. <laughs> yeah, unless the sort of you know, blast came through. But yeah, it was just like fifty three minutes of. Actually, I did do it in two sittings. I started it, and I knew after sort of three or four minutes that I wanted to watch the rest of it, and I knew there was. A, I still hadn't done my drawing, so I had to do my drawing. Um, <laughs> And it's just like, right, okay, right, drawing's done, right. Uh, yeah, I was late to bed last night watching that one. Entirely fair. Yeah. <laughs> Tanda, where can people find you? Well, on, on Instagram is probably the most likely social media spot still, even though it's dropped off, and that's Tanda Madison on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel. I don't put stuff out there. It's also... Tanda Madison. Haven't put anything out there in a long time. If I look through my history, every couple of years I'll make a, I'll have a little burst and I'll make a few videos. <laughs> it seems to it seems to be one of those things I circle back to and and make a few videos every once in a while. And then I'm also a co-host on the Maker Skills podcast. You can find links to that um, on Instagram as well. And all, be the, the, show all the usual yeah. podcast places or hopefully all the usual podcast places since i'm the one responsible for that <laughs> yeah. which is a very fun podcast to listen to I, I, oh, I thank you it's a yeah it's kind uh, of pj's podcast and tom and i hang out on it but uh yeah yeah it's uh, there's some interesting scripting i I've, and i, I yeah it's it's some, very I it's very, some of it it's very directed i mean pj does a good job of uh kind of creating something that has some uniformity to it, but still within those bounds, we, we play around. Um, so. Yeah. I, I, I have, I think I've, I've enjoyed, I've, you know, you know I've, what you're going to get every week. Yeah. You're going to get, you know, similar, similar segments and the same sort of stuff, but with mixed up a little bit. So. Yeah. Tom having done no research. Right. Right. <laughs> Me having done no research, but but faking it somewhat, yeah, winging it well. <laughs> and PJ actually having done some research, and but normally yeah. into superstitions, yeah, yeah, yeah. We usually fall into, um, yeah, just it just kind of evolved into our characters, you know, and what we what we do and what we make fun of one another for doing, um, just kind of evolved over time. And the the, uh, the Johnson's hardware adverts uh, right uh, particularly funny yeah yeah no we en we enjoy those we try to you know when we have a guest on or whatever we we all play with with coming up with the idea for whatever the crazy product is and trying to make it fit in with the podcast and and then at some point in the evolution so pj did the first three i think and then i did starting in episode four i started doing some and then maybe you know, episode six or seven, Tom started doing some. And then at some point it got to be where if you say, oh, it would be funny if we do this. And the other two go, yeah, let's do that. Then you have to do it. So now <laughs> it's like, you know, you're like, eh, do I want to, do I want to have to do the, do I have to want to have to come up with the commercial? Cause, or should I, you know, should I say this? Cause then I'm going to get stuck having to do the commercial. Um, and so now it's, uh, if you come up with the idea, you have to, you have to do the commercial or you have to convince that someone else that they, it was their idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's definitely worth a, a listen. Very, I, I think of the, the most entertaining of the maker podcasts, I think. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fun. It's, it's, as you guys know, it's, it's something that every once in a while it's like, Oh man, I've got to, <laughs> I, I've got to remember to do that. And I, I got other stuff going on or whatever. And, and for me, it's like leaving work in time. So I get made fun of cause I'm right in the middle of something. I'm, I'm having a meeting with someone or someone has just asked me a question and I leave work half an hour early. I kind of sneak out without 
trying to, you know, try not to get someone asking me a question because I have to sneak out early to make it in time um, and, and drive in traffic, which I usually avoid by just working so late that I miss rush hour. Um, so every once in a while, it's like, oh, this is kind of a kind of a drag. But, you know, having having people say nice things is it makes it makes it all worthwhile. Good. Well, I'll, I'll make sure there's um, links to uh, kind of all those channels and, and make skills in the, okay. in the show notes so people can mm -hmm. find them. Uh, when they have a look, um, so I think, uh, yeah, next week, currently I'm waiting on somebody getting back to me for next week, um, which should be interesting. But if I can get who I've, I've asked for, then it should be a good chat, uh, which mm. will hopefully cover some about the EMF uh, festival. Uh, although I'm guessing F might actually stand for festival. Um, field. Field. Like, yes, uh, field. Isn't it? It's already festival. Field, yeah, festival, <laughs> yeah. Um, which took place took place this weekend. Um, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really kind of looking at that kind of some of the posts about that kind of going. It's definitely apart making the, apart from the weather. <laughs> weather was pretty awful for some of it, but apart from that, it's like yeah, we really want to be there, but then you do it every two years. Um, Twenty twenty four. We've got two years of planning. Yeah. We'll be there. Yeah, so planning and saving, and, and hopefully trying to learn enough electronics. And networking type stuff, so I don't actually kind of feel like a complete imposter because I think I would, even though I've got a little bit of background. But I think as a physicist, you can quite happily turn up to EMF and just be. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, I definitely enjoy it. Um, and there's so many people. Yeah, no, I mean, that I, I know. I think right. Even that would that in and of itself would remove any doubt of you know imposter syndrome or anything like. You just just turn up and go. Well, I, you know, taught physics for years. Oh, okay. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's fine with that. So I, I think, yeah. Tanda, thank you very, very much. For oh, doing thank that. you. Yeah. Thank you. It's been very enjoyable. Yeah. It's been an absolute pleasure. And we'll, we'll get you back on at some point. And very sure. much a waffle. It was. Uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Completely different. Uh, yeah. It's what then, we then, then, yeah. then other, yeah. Then another podcast or something where it's, you know, yeah. you say a lot of the same things about yourself or whatever. Um, exactly. It's, yeah, it's a we very much just a conversation that we would have if we all ran into each other. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we try to avoid yeah. that, particularly and particularly with people who have been on other podcasts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, I mean, yeah, people can go to those other podcasts and listen to them and listen to um, people's backstories and things. Um, right. Yeah, we do it sometimes. It, if it comes up, it comes up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It, yeah. So, just have a, a nice relaxed chat with podcast with no agenda. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah. Thank you again. So, yeah. So, bye, folks. We'll see you next week. <laughs>